All right, so I'm doing this instead of a video because for some reason, I mean, the headphones kind of pick up, but the phone really doesn't much at all, at least not on the YouTube. So, you know, we're leaving a day early. I'm pretty sure we weren't supposed to leave till tomorrow, but that's all right. Well, the kids need to be back. Yeah, they gotta, they gotta go to school. The school district is wild, but that's a whole nother topic for a later date. Man, it's like 84 degrees right now. At home, it's 45 and raining. Last night, it was 33 and snowing, and we were hanging in a fucking hot tub, dude. Until 3. And until 3. Got up at 9. Hung out outside for a while. It's crazy. They did. The, what should my car do, you know, a mate and dance with, yeah. uh, what was that music? Uh, an audio slave, show me how to live, the bird was fucking jamming to that shit, dude. That was pretty funny. You got her hot and bothered. <laughs> it's her maintenance season, Kevin. Dude, there's palm trees in the front yard, mango tree in the back. And summer's a coconut tree in the back. They don't know where, but the dogs keep on grabbing them. A fucking pool, jacuzzi, like decent size, small shit. A nice deck in the front and the back. Yeah, like this is money, dude. You have to, I don't, I don't even know how much this costs, but it has to be. A horseshoe driveway. Yeah, a horseshoe driveway going on. You know why your fence going through like it was. It, this part is really landscaped, and then the funny part is across the street, there's a real small regular house. Old. Yeah, real old style. So it's funny that you know these two houses are right across from mm -hmm. one another. And then you got one right next to you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is big still though. That one is partially lifted. It looks like it's really strange. Yeah, the, of the, house the front of open. yeah, the front of the house has the first and the second story, and the back of the house, the bottom is missing, and it's just the second half with an upper deck, which is kind of strange. I don't think I've ever I seen like Tetris, anything right? like that before. It does look like a Tetris piece, the yeah. blue one. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly what it looks like. Dude, I mean, you gotta come out here and vacation, dude. This is the way to do it. If you like the heat, because... Or you just don't want to freeze. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I'm really worried about is getting back and then being sick from being in 84 degree weather back down to the 30s or lower. But it's March, man. Spring needs to hurry the fuck up and get here instead of taking his damn time. I've had enough of winter already. You know, I know I'm going to be sweating my balls off in the summer, but it's much better, you know, just put on a jersey and go. Instead of having to put four or five layers on, plus a triple down goose jacket, and try not to sweat because you don't want to get fucking pneumonia. Uh. But passing through all these places, the one thing I notice is how different everybody is from state to state. It's funny, man. They got some wild people out of these rest stops. Apparently, you got to be careful because some of them, the for you know, I'm gonna get into this on the podcast. But just in case you're traveling right now and you're going down the I-95, you got to make sure that you go to each state rest stop and not the ones in the middle, unless they're right there where you can see them. Because if not, it will say like, oh, there's an Exxon or a Wawa or whatever. That is, you know, a mile this way. Just get off of the ramp and you'll be right there. No, dude, you got to go a while. Then you're in some strange town in a state that you're trying to pass through. And especially down south, dude. I mean, ugh. we have those areas up north, bro. The the GPS brought us to fucking Philly. And that was fun. Going through Philly at like 2 in the morning. Whatever the hell it was. Yeah, I'm fucking locking the doors. Ugh. Yeah. Creepy shit. Well, I'll get into all that when I get back. In the meantime, I'm gonna try to figure out how the hell I can upload this thing. Let me see if I can do it.
The following program is intended for mature audiences. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Fucking laughing at bites. Fucking look at that sparrow over there. What an asshole. I hate when you double click on OBS. It's convenient how when you double click the OBS, it makes it bigger. But when you're trying to move it and it reads it as yeah. a double click, that's pretty annoying. You know what I actually figured out recently? And I don't know if you have this problem or not, but if I have Streamlabs OBS opened at all, if I go to Google, if I type and I use the fucking letter R, it starts recording a fucking video. That might be because it's registered in your hotkey. That's as that's the what start I, record button. That's what I have. I have it as a, as a that, record button. It will do that. Yep. Uh, that's so fucking... So every time... If I'm not using OBS, I have to shut down OBS. Yeah. So stupid. I know. I dude, that. I have the one as my beginning. Yeah. And the, that's not the problem. Because when OBS is open and I press one, it doesn't really do anything. However, the end hotkey is the backspace. And when oh, I'm in the middle yeah. of searching a video, oh, yeah. yep. I'll forget that's yep. the button, and I press it, and then I get mad at myself. Fuck. It's brutal. Anyway, yeah, welcome back to Laughing at Birds. This is going to be episode 10. We don't know what it's named yet because we don't know what the hell the main topic of conversation is going to end up being. However, we do know that Kevin had an exciting couple of days. I've, I've had some insightful moments uh, based on the marketing work I do, so I guess we probably have some stuff to talk about. Yeah, I'm, I don't know where do I want to start. Well, I don't know where to start. Let me start out by saying, for those of you that don't know, to Mr. Mad Drops, um, I wound nobody's, up... Nobody's ever going to get that. No, they're not. But you know what the goal is? Ooh. is Every time they hear somebody say, for those of you that don't know, yeah. that's going to pop in their head. That's the goal. If that, act, if that actually works out, like if you get the mob mentality going with that... That'd be great. That'd be really cool. But... All right, so for those of you guys that don't know... I'm Mr. Madrox. Oh, I shit! <laughs> it's starting to work! I went to... Uh, Pablo, honey, come home to Florida. <laughs> I don't... That's not the voice. Hello? Yeah? Pablo, honey? Yeah? Please, honey, come down to Florida. Huh? Come to Florida, honey. We miss you. Yeah, who's this? Pablo, honey? You washing your ass, Pablo? Who is this? Keep yourself clean, honey at all i had it but i didn't have it <laughs> oh i get wait where are you getting that from pablo honey come home to florida the jerky boys is that what that is yep because they every time you say pablo honey i think of their Radiohead album pablo honey oh which i think that's what that's the album that freak was on i think that's one of their first albums okay so Good i went story. i went down to florida for uh, a wedding i told you in private remember i said that i didn't think i was invited yeah. And I was really upset about that. Yes, yes, yes. So, okay. We we go down there. It's a it was a day and a half drive there and a day and a half drive back basically with stops and shit like that. So, we get there, we wind up staying at my uh fucking stepmother's daughter's house. I don't know what she would be to me because she's she's not married to my father anymore, so we're technically not I mean, related. it's kind of your stepsister. Yeah. You know. Even though I don't think she considers me blood, it's a whole different well, situation. Uh, oh, yeah. No, it would be blood, wouldn't it? <clears throat> so, I mean... I thought I wasn't invited to the wedding, and I was pretty upset about that, because at no point, I want to remind you, at no point did my niece reach out to me about any of this. Yeah. And then we get there, and talks of the wedding are goings on, and it turns out everything is being thrown together at the last minute. Oh, so, okay, then it wasn't just you, probably, that I had to deal with, like, I'm suddenly showing up sort of shit. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, apparently, there were plans that were made months in advance for the wedding to happen. Got it. Got but it. all the, the whole details... Thing got botched. Exactly. Got it. So, when we get there, dude, they're talking about, like, it's you gotta bring your own liquor if you want to drink. They're only gonna have... Now, just for clarity, whose wedding is this again? This is my niece's wedding. This is your niece's wedding. Yeah. Okay, okay. If she would even be considered my niece still, it's my stepsister's I just wanted daughter. to make sure we were on the right track. I, I, right. Didn't, I 
couldn't remember who it was. So, yeah. okay, so everybody's expected to BYOB and shit? Yeah. That's and crazy. People were super upset about that. Well, like, yeah, they found bullshit. out the night before the wedding yeah. that it was BYOB. Forgot, I wouldn't go. I, I'd, be, I'd be like, I'm out. People and were I'm saying not even, that. By the way, I'm not even a boozer or anything. It's just like... The principle. Yeah, you're going to have me to your fucking shit. We all know how this goes. It's been going the same way for fucking hundreds of years. You're seriously going to bang... You're going to... You're gonna fuck it up that bad? Even if you don't do It's my day, not yours. I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying do an open bar. No, fuck that. It, Even if yeah. you just do everybody gets a drink free and then after that you pay for your own, at least you're making an effort. That's what I'm saying. Dude, people are coming from out of state. Like you it, it, once you decide this is gonna be a, a an event, yeah, you have to fucking maintain it like an event. I'm sorry, but 100%. you really do. Now they did rent out. They rented out a hall in a very expensive neighborhood, and I saw one of the strangest things I've ever seen in my life. This neighborhood had its own gas station. Yeah, I didn't understand because I feel like that happens. Like you, where where Jen's mom lives, there's the gas station. No, no, no. I don't it's understand. A, it's a closed off development. Oh, it's a gated community? It's a gated community. Oh, that is And weird. it has a fucking yeah, that's gas weird. station, Okay, that's bro. weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen that. I was like, dude, that, that's how you know you got money, man. When yeah. your neighborhood has gas, but mm-hmm. then at the same time, the flip side of my brain was like, I bet dude, they pay for their gas with like peasant scalps. Bro, I was like, <laughs> dude, this is like some Outer Limits type shit. <laughs> There is nothing wrong with your television set. We will control the horizontal. We will control the vertical. We can roll the image. Make it flutter. We can change the focus to a soft blur. Or sharpen it to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit quietly and we will control all that you see and hear. We repeat, there is nothing wrong with your television set. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. I got this one off an orphan. This is good for half a tank. Especially down there, dude. You never know. I mean, you go into the wrong neighborhood, dude. All bets are off. Yeah. So fucking... Frontier, frontier laws back in play. <laughs> yeah, there were guys that were Spanish that showed up in spurs and cowboy hats. That's fucking awesome. With the vests and everything. Well, oh my god! Didn't speak a word of fucking English, dude. And I was just like, bro, you have to respect that. Jesus Christ! Motherfucker said, "I'm wearing what the fuck I want. I'm a goddamn cowboy, and everybody is going to accept it." Sit, bro. He seriously, That's crazy. He seriously looked like he could have been a fucking hitman. Holy a shit. couple of these guys, they didn't. They look like. They, let me put it. They have a. They have a thing in their culture, apparently, where instead of handing out envelopes like the Italians do, or you know whatever variety of people do it outside of Italians. What they were doing is after the bride and the groom dance, they set it up to where they had music playing in the background and then people would come up, you would give money to the groom, but the groom has to dance with you. Same with the bride. And then they would take the money and they would pin it on the vest or the dress of the person. And there were literal paper pesos. That were, I would be so fascinated by this. I was. That is so fucking cool. I was like, dude, wait, what's going on? I never here? even heard of that. Me neither. I have never heard of it, never seen it, and I'm not very cultured. I don't get out much. Yeah, so, but like, I know I know enough about stuff, and like, that I've never heard of that. That's super fucking cool, man. It was really awesome, dude. And uh, you know, I'm at the table. I had a I had a couple of people yell at me because while they're in the middle of doing this. I mean, music is blaring, everything is happening, nobody's really paying attention. I said, well, you know what the cool thing about this versus the envelopes is that when people walk up to you and pin the money to you, they can see how cheap you are. Oh, yeah, good call. Everybody around the table was like, hey, stop. What are you, like, (laughs) shut up. (laughs) Shut Shut the fuck up, you fucking sissies. 
Like, come on, dude. If you're offended by that, go fuck yourself. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, dude, can you not act like you were not sitting here thinking the same fucking thing? Because yeah. I saw all of you shaking your head. Don't act like you're better than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, my God. You know. So that was that was pretty cool. The other thing that they did at the wedding that I thought was really interesting mm-hmm. was they had a seating chart. Dude, the level of anxiety when they announced at the wedding and they were like, "All right, when everybody goes in, you need to go and find your name on the card, and that will tell you what table you're sitting at." Yeah, yeah. I was hesitant, so I didn't walk up to it right away. I just kind of hung out in the back. They were like, "Hey, stupid, go get your name." <laughs> And I'm thinking the whole time, like, I know my name's not up there. I wasn't invited to this thing. Yeah. (laughs) Completely right. (laughs) Oh, my God. That's an important piece that I forgot. Yeah. Dude, so I go up there, and I'm looking around. I don't find it right away. Yeah, you're looking for construction paper and a Sharpie. Yeah, exactly. No bullshit. Dude, now I'm panicking. Bro, I'm sweating just thinking about it. I'm sweating just thinking about it. I'm looking around, and I go, fuck, I'm not here. I'm not. I'm not on the fucking list. I'm. I'm waiting for the bouncer in the suit to come yeah. walk over to me and go. All right, but you out. Yeah. So after I, I walk away and they're like, "Where's your Where's your card?" I'm like, "It's not there." They go, "Asshole, move the." They had it on. Uh, what's the thing that you put the clothespins on? You hang it outside. Oh, a clothesline. Yeah, they had. A, they had. A, they had the cards. They had like business cards folded over. Yeah. 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 On a clothesline, and then oh, they would no. take the clothing pin and put it over the thing. Was your name up there? It was. Wow, so you were supposed to be there. But it was behind somebody else's, okay. so it was that hidden. That must have been really fucking nice to like f- see, though. When I finally saw it, because I was panicking, yeah, like, yeah. oh my god, they didn't know I was coming here. I really wasn't invited. Yeah, yeah. This is horrible. I feel like I don't belong. I find a damn card. I'm like, oh shit. And of course, of course. Was Jen's there too? Yeah, her nice. name was there too, which awesome. was crazy. I honestly I wasn't expecting that. That was a classy touch. That's cool as by shit, them. man. That's awesome. Of course it wouldn't be a party unless depression showed up. Because the uh, first thought after I found it was you know they printed that up last minute, right? Oh my and I God. know I uh, Yeah, but it. listen to me. We both have depression. You have asshole depression. <laughs> like <laughs> you have depression that literally you you manufacture reasons. Like yeah. I mean, everybody with depression does, but you really. I mean, they, I hear the work that work music in my head when I think <laughs> you're. It's like, da, 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 ba, da, 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 what are we gonna make today, boys? Let's pretend that his girlfriend didn't love him since 1999. That's, like you just you go crazy with it. So, dude, the, uh, the objective. <laughs> Your is, girlfriend didn't even like you when she started dating you. There it is now. There's the, just uh, dating you to be able to have a place to live. Thought you planted. Split the bill. Thought planted. You are nothing but the clownfish to her coral reef. Goddamn right. It is symbiotic at best. You are. You're not even. You know what? If she's a fish. If you're the. If she's a fish, you're the seaweed that people pick out of the crack of their ass when they're leaving the beach. <laughs> so, dude, what was pretty cool is the objective was to, you pull your name off, you pull the card off, and then there's a little chalkboard that's sitting right there, yeah. and it says, take your, take your name and replace it with a picture, and they had little camera things there that I had to work my way into the 21st century to figure out how to use the damn thing. Yeah. But it was a Polaroid camera. That's cool. So you would snap your photo and then you would place it in where your your name was. Yeah. So Jim was like, oh, I don't... I don't think everybody was doing selfies. Like, it was a selfie camera. Mm. That's what you're supposed to do. So, like, I don't really feel comfortable, like, you know, doing my own picture. Should we just take one together? I'm like, all right, asshole, let's be the only ones that are different. Let's take it together. (laughs) We already feel like interlopers. Let's make it even worse. Yeah, so we do it because, you know, you're not going to argue with her. You're not going to win. Yeah. What made me feel better is her father actually later on in the night wound up doing it with his girlfriend where they took the picture together as well. But when I went back to the table, my brother looks at me and he goes, did you guys take a picture together? Together? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. He goes, ugh, fucking cornballs. 
I'm like, well, I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah. I, oh, I just remembered this. My my cousin's mom was there. So I'm sitting at the table after the picture is done, hanging out, drinking my fucking orange splice like a man. Orange what? Splice. What the hell is splice? You know, the soda, was it, is that what it is? Splice? <laughs> Are you talking about slice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking orange splice. Only uh, only DNA scientists drink orange splice. <laughs> oh my god, the oh, the taste will split your cells. It's so good. <laughs> Fucking wow. I, okay, I'm gonna break down exactly why that's amazing. You replaced the simpler word <laughs> with the more complex <laughs> word. You went scientific instead of basic with your fuck up. I don't even. I, does is that still a fuck up? I don't know. Or did well, you just I mean, do something cool? They they spliced the chemicals together to make the soda. Get right? out! Get out right now! You're not gonna win this. It's not. You said orange splice. That is amazing. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking my cousin's mom calls me over, and this is how she does it. Yeah. It's real old school. I'm sitting at the table, minding my business, drinking my orange DNA, and she goes, "Get over here." Fuck, what did I do? I have a suit on. I dressed up and everything, man. We're like, what What did I do wrong? I walk over. I'm like, hey, what? what's going on? I feel like I'm five again. Why did you put a custom label on that soda? <laughs> Bro. Why does it say splice? <laughs> she fucking, she goes, come here. Sit down. I'm like, okay. Yeah. What's going on? She goes. I already know what this is. Go ahead. Stay still. Mm -hmm. Pulls her phone out. Snaps a picture. I'm like, what? What the fuck? And yeah. she goes, whenever I try to get, uh, whenever I try to get a picture of my son, he avoids me. So that's she's, what I do to him. She's the director of memory coordination. I knew that's where you were going. She's, yeah. it, it's a very systematic. Like I am making memories today, and it is going to be structured. She only took the picture just to send it to my cousin to let him know that I was in attendance. Apparently, that was the only reason why she did that. That's fucking weird. Yeah. What like. I mean, I haven't seen her in years. What the hell kind of fucking A-list celebrity is your cousin? That's like, uh, here's who's in attendance, sir. I, she didn't do it to anybody else. I guess maybe he talks to everybody else. Or she make you a fucking perp walk too? I think they were talking about how I look. Because I mean, I guess everybody talks about how I'm really not look? good that I'm you doing. You're in a suit. No, right? no, no, no. I mean, how I look because of the shit I have wrong with me. Oh, you're talking about the. The MS and shit. I oh. think they talk about that. Be like, I think hey, you look, he, I think you look better than you did back in the fucking day, honestly. Well, that's. I mean, they're probably having that conversation though. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, how is he looking? Is he all right? And she's mm -hmm. like, well, I'll take a picture of him real quick. You don't have to know what's going on. So, I mean, I can. You could just say that. I'd be okay yeah. with it. I understand. <laughs> Dance for me, weirdo. Yeah, really. <laughs> they just like move that fucking leg. <laughs> yeah. <hold up. laughs> Does that thing get stanky or is it incapable? <laughs> is it, did they tell you to do the janky leg? <laughs> oh man, I was going to try to work something in with the cha-cha slide, but I can't think of something to replace it with. No, neither can I. Right? Well, that's a, we'll get hung up on it. That's, yeah, we will. That's a tough one. Jesus. Fucking do the drag drag. All right, so we'll move directly from that since we're on family. Let's get into Wait, no, I want to know what you were talking about before. So when we were in the kitchen before, you said that you had to, something was like... Heavy on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I was just about to bring up. Okay, okay, okay. So I went down with my brother. I always thought that we were a lot closer than we are and maybe this is me making shit up in my head i, I want to know how you got here because we were just talking about how da, 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 da. so yeah. i want to see if maybe there's something to work through here so i mean the ride down seemed okay i mean he he gets impatient with me about sometimes what? like when we stop for gas i'll jump out i'll go to the bathroom and then i come back out and then if i see He's still doing something and he's walking around in the store. I'll take that second run back into the bathroom and try to finish pushing out whatever I was trying to get out to make sure I get it all, especially because we're going to be in the car for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time I do this, he's like, where, 
Where is he, man? Like, I want to I wanna get back to driving. For like, those scoring at home, Kevin's not talking about he's, like, inducing shit or anything. He no. has He retains water because yeah. of, of the MS. So, like, he, he has trouble peeing. Yeah, so that, that's what it is. And it seemed like he would get aggravated every time that I do this, to which I'm kind of like... I mean, maybe I'm maybe I'm making it bigger than it is because he just wants to get there and get the trip over with. So I'm gonna say, right? Like when I remember a couple times when I when I would go up to my father's house with my girlfriend and my mother. Yeah. They they're I mean, and I don't give a fuck how this comes off. They're typical women. Like they have to stop like every twenty goddamn minutes to take a piss. Yeah. So I was getting mad at them. Like not mad, but like frustrated. Like Jesus Christ, now I gotta take an exit and I gotta fucking find a gas station and stuff. So I feel like it was probably just that general level of frustration. I don't think it was like personal. Kevin's fucking it's cause it's Kevin, I gotta fucking do this kind of thing. Yeah. On the way back, I had a podcast playing in the car on his Bluetooth speaker. Mm-hmm. He's in the back. On the way back from Florida. Yeah. Okay. Fast forwarding, because then I'm going to have to rewind to go back to the other shit that I wanted to talk about. But okay. He, uh, he gets sick probably from eating a bunch of garbage because apparently he's vegan or some bullshit where he doesn't eat meat anymore. Oh, yeah, your brother. He's, he's stopped eating meat. Yeah. That's fucking Like, he'll crazy. eat shit. He's not, he's not one of those people that won't eat dairy products like he will but so he's not vegan then he will vegan is no animal products whatsoever he's a vegetarian i a guess vegetarian it would yeah. Be. yeah yeah because he'll he'll go full vegan on occasion yeah, yeah but to make it easier like he was pretty mad that nobody had anything at the at the wedding or even at the house for him to eat knowing no. what his meal preferences are but there was nothing meatless at all nothing not a single Except thing that didn't have meat. The only thing that didn't have meat was no the fucking fruit, rice and beans or anything. Was the fruit platter? No, even the even the rice had meat in it, in one capacity or another, from wow. being mixed up with the other food. Holy shit! So, That's strange that they wouldn't have a meatless thing. Yeah. That's weird. But fucking, we're driving back. Oh, fucking. Yeah. Wow. He he wakes up from the back of his car, and I have a podcast playing, and he. He goes, hey, do me a favor. Lower that a little bit. Oh, so yeah. I lower it. Yeah. Okay, more, lower it, more, lower it, more. Now it's completely off. Kid goes, all right, that's good. And then goes back to fucking sleep. Yeah. To me, that's passive aggressive assholishness yeah. at its finest moment. If you didn't want to hear the damn thing anymore, you could have just told me to turn it off and I would have happily turned it off. You don't have to be a dick about it. Yeah. Now that that rubs me a certain way because I feel like, dude, you should know me better than that. Maybe not. No, no, no. I wasn't. That's not why I was saying it. I what I was gonna say is, there's a fair chance that your brother is just not a good travel companion. That's true. We wound up taking a break for a second right here, so I'm just gonna input a story. In between, because this happened this morning and I wanted to add it on to the podcast. So, there's that. So, listen. This morning, I'm up, I'm in here, cutting the podcast up. And uh, I kind of wish Doug was here so I can get his input on this, but that's alright, no big deal. I get a call this morning from the management office in the apartment complex that I live in. And they're like, hey, can... Uh, can you and Jen come down here? Because uh, we we need to talk to you guys real quick. Well, they didn't even say we need to talk to you. They just said, can you guys come down here? Orig- uh, immediately, my mind goes to, all right, somebody made a complaint against us for some reason. Maybe I'm a little bit too loud in here with the music and the recording. Or I have no idea what it could be, but it, it has to be bad. There's no, they never call you down to an office for anything good. They're just like being interrogated by the fucking police. When they stop you, your mind automatically goes to, your mind automatically goes to the worst thing possible. So we go down to office and the property manager comes out and she goes, Hey, um, I'll, I'll come out there real quick. And she was very soft spoken. And this, I don't know if I brought her up on the podcast before, but this woman 
is not known to be soft-spoken and or nice. She is very hardened and to the point. She does not fucking play games, which, I mean, if you're a property manager, you can't. You can't fuck around. You can't allow people to think that, you know, everybody is going to be friends. That's just not the way the business works. So I understand it. So when she comes out, she's like, hey, uh, I got a question for you. Um, you know, I don't want to be rude. And I'm like, oh, this is interesting. And she goes, but, um... We got an anonymous tip from somebody in the building that said that you guys told them you had bed bugs. Now, you know, I mean, if you do, it's not a big deal. We told you when you first moved in, if you ever have any kind of issues like bed bugs, fleas, anything like that, you know, we can get an exterminator in here immediately and we can take care of the problem. No, nobody has to know that it came from you. No issue at all whatsoever. And I just looked at her and like, we definitely don't have bed bugs. And she was like, oh, oh, okay. I don't know why somebody would say that. And I, I'm sitting there, dude, and I'm thinking, the only thing that can come to my mind is possibly maybe having a brief conversation with one of the people that lives in this building, like when we pass by one another in the hallway or some shit. You know, occasionally when I'm downstairs having a smoke, somebody else in the building would be smoking as well, and we'll get into conversation, you know, light shit. And, I mean, I've, I've talked about the exterminator coming here, and I, I said to one girl that lives here, I wonder why the person is coming. Maybe somebody has bed bugs or fleas or something. So I don't know if maybe she took that as that's what we had and we were putting it as, you know, somebody would go, you know, my friend really has this problem when they have that problem. So I don't know if that's what it, what it was. So, it's an anonymous tip, and now I'm sitting here thinking to myself, like, okay, I understand why you would go to the office with something like that, because bed bugs are a real pain in the fucking ass to get rid of. If you have them, it is a goddamn nightmare, and they are, especially now, I think more than ever, and I have not Googled this recently, but when I did look into it, I I knew a couple of people that had them, and... It is really difficult to get rid of them. Really difficult. Especially if you live in an apartment complex just because of the fact that they have to spray down everybody's fucking place. It's actually very common for them to kill bed bugs with either very high heat, I think, or very low temperature. I'm pretty sure it may be both of those, but usually the go-to is heat. They use very high temperatures, over 100 degrees, and they will burn them out to make them all come out and kill them and shit like that. But it is really difficult. So, I mean, I can see somebody being worried about possibly thinking that that was the case what kind of bothers me about it is not even i'm pretty sure i said not that they went to the office but they did they didn't come to us if you thought that we had some kind of issue like that why wouldn't you say listen you know i thought i heard you mention that you guys may or may not have had bed bugs and do something about that shit now look, the people in the in the build in the office were very uncomfortable with bringing this to our attention because I guess people associate bed bugs with being dirty. So when you say somebody has bugs, your immediate reaction is probably going to be, "Well, these people think I'm a scumbag." But we don't have bugs. And I even told the lady in the office, "Dude, I would be the first motherfucker in here." If I saw anything, anything at all that was crawling around in our apartment, you fucking better believe I would be in that office stat, dude. Get this shit taken care of because I don't... Bugs skeeve me the fuck out. And as I said, I know people... My mom in the building that she lives in. She lives in a rundown piece of shit apartment complex. Her landlord is a scumbag. And... They have bed bugs in there, and she's been fighting for 
for over a year to try to get rid of them and they're not going anywhere because it's really difficult to fumigate every apartment and you know it's pretty much yeah i mean i know this is not groundbreaking fucking news and it may not seem like that great of a story but this just kind of brought me to again goes back to etiquette questions do you bring something like this up to somebody or is it because of the nature of what it is is it that well if i bring this up they're gonna think that i'm saying that they're dirty people and i don't want to offend them so then rather than me doing that i'm just gonna go straight to the office and i'm gonna say something to them Which, I mean, I can appreciate the fact that the office people tried to be delicate with the situation. But, I mean, I understand how serious it is. And I'm not mad at anybody. I'm not even mad at the person that went in there. I just really, I would have rather them come to us first. But, I mean, why? What, on the flip side of that, to play devil's advocate, I'm also thinking, what could they possibly have said? Is there anything that they could have done? Because even if we did have them, in their mind, they could be thinking there's no guarantee that we would even go to the office and, you know, let them know. So I don't know, man. I just... I guess they did the right thing, right? I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's odd. It was a weird feeling, I'll tell you that much. Because, dude, we are really... We were really anal about shit like that. In the house that we lived in, we had mice, and the shit drove me fucking crazy. They are disgusting. I don't care if you love them little creatures. They are fucking nasty, and they carry diseases most of the fucking time. I don't care why. It's just the point that they fucking do. It's gross, dude. And bugs, bed bugs, fleas scabies, whatever whatever you can think of, roaches, roaches, ugh. when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I lived in an apartment that, you know, we had roaches, the worst is, we were living there, somebody moved in next to us, and then we got them, because they brought them, and I've learned more about bugs over the years, that like, it only takes, if you didn't know, it only takes one roach egg to eventually create an infestation in your fucking house dude and also with the bed bug shit this might be something i'm gonna go into deeper at another time when i can google it and look into it plus it really doesn't match up with what is being talked about on the podcast at the current moment but i would i also want to just throw in there about this wedding you know, I did cut out a lot of shit, but in case I did cut it out, I want to mention that I thought that a few months back, my brother came to me and said that he was looking for, you know, Jen to go down with him to Florida so that he can have a driver so he didn't have to make the trip all by himself. And at the time, pretty sure that he said that we were not invited at the wedding invited to the wedding rather at that moment so i don't know if they changed it last minute either way it was an it was definitely an experience i feel bad that i didn't i didn't know anything about my niece's fiance now husband before they got married i would have liked to have met him and got to know him a little bit i mean not that it really makes a difference i'm not going to marry him and he seemed like a really nice kid like a genuinely nice kid when they were going through when they were going through their vows together this poor guy couldn't even get through a fucking sentence without choking up and crying which i mean i know you can make fun of him for it dude but i mean the kid seems like he legitimately cares now for all i know he could be beating her behind closed doors you shouldn't say that. Um, I mean, I don't think that he is. I'm just saying there are people out there that can fucking play the role very well. But when I did meet him at the wedding, when they were walking around talking to everybody, and it was it was awkward a little bit. 
only just because I I mean I guess who am I? You know what I mean? I'm a I'm a passer. I'm a passer through passer by or whatever the fucking term would be. I honestly don't think he probably wasn't really worried too much. I overthink a lot of shit, but I really do mean it when I say that I wish I would have met him ahead of time. Just because I would like to know the kind of dude that is marrying my niece. Again, it's not gonna make a fucking difference whether she marries him or not. If she loves him and he loves her and that's what they want to do with their lives, I fucking, I support them and I really, I hope that they will have a bright future ahead of them and that their house will be one that is full of love and all that other happy horse shit that goes along with it. I just feel bad that I'm not more involved with a lot of things. But I mean then again these people are these people are growing, dude. I don't think that my family is definitely not the kind of family where we all really rely on one another. I mean they're more close knit with each other down there. You know, the people who live in Florida are all close together. Versus like I'm all the way fourteen plus hundred miles away, so I mean, it really doesn't make a difference, but I appreciate that they did invite us. Again, it was really classy of them to add Jen's name onto the seating list. I mean, they didn't they didn't have to do that or even have us there outside of, you know, having my brother get the extra driver to help him get back and forth they didn't they could have easily just said okay they can they can go with you to drive down but we're full to capacity with the wedding so you know just have them do something else in the meantime which i know that would be probably a real asshole thing to do but it could have been done i'm sure there are people that that do that so you know thanks to them not that they will listen to this but thanks to them for having us to the wedding it was very interesting to see a different culture and the way that they do things this is again why i wish that i kind of knew a little bit more about the guy that she was marrying because they had i have questions about culture and in this day and age i don't know how much you can actually ask like the the whole pinning the money on the on the vest thing when they did that i wanted to ask them where does that where does that come from you know how long has it been in the culture now granted maybe they don't maybe they don't know maybe it's just something that the family has done maybe it was tradition but these are questions that i have that i, I would like to know what the deal is with that if you know you know, drop a comment either on the SoundCloud or on the YouTube or somewhere. And let me know if you've ever been to a wedding where something like this has happened. And then also the other question I have is when it comes to giving money at a wedding in an envelope and things of that nature. Do you overthink the amount that you're going to put in there or do you just do what you can do and just hope that the people that you're going to the wedding understand what it is that your situation is like and is it more important that you're there versus how much money is in that envelope like we couldn't we couldn't give them anything we didn't have anything to give them but i would i would hope I would hope as shitty as this sounds coming from me that the fact that we were there was enough. And I mean, who the fuck am I? I'm not a movie star, but I'm just saying. All right, we're back in. And there was a bird in the place that we stayed at. It was in my car. Yeah. And I actually found out a really fucked up story secondhand from them. They got this bird... Out of a sanctuary in Florida. Oh. Which is apparently where they have one of those down there. It's pretty big from what they were telling us. They have a lot of nature preserves in Florida, yeah. So, they told me a story. And Disney, obviously, would never be a sponsor anyway. But after this, they definitely won't. So, they were telling me about how they did a movie 
uh, called Rio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yep and yep. the bird that they used for that, they used it in the movie and then brought it directly to the sanctuary after they were done and said, here, you can take this. We're done with it now. Wow. And the bird was actually so stressed out from the entire thing happening, it pulled all of its feathers out. And apparently, once they're an adult, if the feathers are gone, they don't grow back. So now it looks like a fucking chicken. Wow. Just sitting in a fucking bird sanctuary. So on behalf of birds everywhere, fuck you, Disney. Fuck you, Disney. That's horrible. Right? It, I was like, dude, how the fuck can they get away with that? They're like, that's just the way that it's the way that it is. That's crazy. Just fucking horrible, man. So I'll wrap up the trip to Florida with rest stops and car eyelashes. Which apparently are a thing. I had no idea that was even in existence. Yeah. But, you know, some lady pulled into a Delaware rest stop with eyelashes on her fucking car. It was disgusted. Wow. It was unfucking believable. What you got over there? Something about the bird? Yeah, I'm Seeing if it you up. can find some kind of news on it? Yeah. They probably killed everybody that was involved. So nobody knows nothing. The real life blue parrot from Rio is now officially extinct in the wild. Oh, cool. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> we did it. We did it again, humans. Yeah. Nice job. Wiped out another fucking species. We're fucking awesome. Because we have to make a movie that some fucking spitty mouth little fucking kid needs to watch. Serious. Uh, fuck kids, dude. I'm done with that. Well, phrasing. But uh, yeah, like, <laughs> I can't fucking, I, I can't stand them. I really can't. Well, th- I'm not even going to shit. Th- it has nothing to do with this Disney stuff. There is no, there is no realm in which I can picture myself being a parent this day and age. I no. can't do it. I can't I, fucking do it. Money, way too yes. much. That's the number one fucking thing. Then you got to go into the school environment. How much it would cost to get them into a private school where they're probably going to get molested anyway. Oh my God. And then you got to worry about... Future Kevin, make a decision on that one. I'm going to stand by my statement. I'm not saying that every single priest or teacher, whatever, is a molester or a rapist, but they're out there. And to ignore that is irresponsible. So, you know what, dude? It doesn't... Be offended if you want. I don't care. It's not going to change the fucking facts, bro. Don't get mad at me. Talk to the fucking Vatican. And then you got to worry about your kid either getting knocked up or knocking somebody else up at the ripe old age of fucking 14 nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who the fuck needs all that? You, you want to talk about gray hair, dude? The president of the United States and parents are the two occupations that will fucking make your hair go mm-hmm. gray quick as shit. It's ridiculous. Absolutely. I can't I can't even picture a world in which I would do it now. Just I, I, I fantasize about it sometimes. I'm not gonna lie. Like especially the age I'm at, like I do I, I'm starting to get that pull where it's like preserve your legacy, like continue the story of your your lineage and stuff like this. Like I've thought about it too. It's becoming a little bit more important to me, but like every time I fucking think about it and then I consider people in a similar economic situation as I am and like I know exactly what they fucking go through and I'm like, I literally like I just I feel like logistically I can't do it. Am I a good enough person to raise a child? That's the other thing that I think I, think I could about. raise a kid. I, I think I could. I just I. The other part of it, and this is the selfish part, and I don't give a fuck what people have to say about you it. You want is, your life. I, I don't want to yet. I, I don't want to raise another human being yet. No, dude. At all. I mean, the amount of time... It, it's set, I, I think a lot of people have kids, and this is probably going to be an unpopular opinion, but I think a lot of people have kids out of the stake of trying to save a relationship. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. You know, from what I've seen... I think a lot of people, when their relationship starts to fall apart, they think, oh, we'll have a child together, and that will help. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's only going to build more resentment what that's already call, there. They call that, I think this is a more sexist term, uh, to be more like, 
women want to make sure the man's not going anywhere, but like it's still it's a good general term. I think they call it anchor baby or something. I was thinking that, but I thought that may have been related to immigration. I wasn't sure. I, oh, it could be too. I'm not sure. It might be a double. They might use. But whatever, it. it's a dude. Honestly, it's a fucking solid general term for like having a kid to to fulfill a purpose rather than the joy of having a child. Hundred percent. You know what I mean? And I mean, this is not like. People break balls all the time and be like, oh, if you have a cat or a dog, you can't compare that to having a kid. Bull fucking shit. Yeah, well, it may not be the same exact thing. Yeah. The difference is, dude, if you if you adopt a cat or a dog and halfway through the process, you realize you're not ready, you can bring that motherfucker to the pound. And I'll give you another one, too. Here's how raising a kid... Oh, this is going to be a really unpopular opinion. Here's how raising a kid is, I'm going to say... 50 times easier than raising a fucking pet. Yeah. At some point, you're going to be able to talk to the kid and communicate how you feel about what the kid's doing. Like yeah. the, the fucking dog, unless it's like the, and if, by the way, if it's the best trained dog or cat, it's, it's not going to behave shitty. But like, if you have a dog or cat that behaves in a shitty way, Ugh. Like you, you can't do anything. You when you can't communicate with it, you can't get it to understand. And the best part mm-hmm. is, dude, people with animals, dude, they do the same thing that people with kids do. A person that is a shitty pet owner, you can't tell that motherfucker that their animal is out of control. Oh because yeah. Because then no. they're taking it no, like as a personal. That's my baby. Yeah, like that's no. my fucking baby. Fuck you and your baby, shit. dude. My fa- the, my favorite most hated thing. And I'm going to, ca- if my girlfriend ever hears this, if her mother ever hears this, I'm going to catch such shit for this. But I don't care because I will never, ever fucking agree with this. Is when a fucking uh, human being comes into play, like say it's a relationship, doesn't matter what it is. And they say that shit about, well, the dog was here first. Fuck that. Fuck you. I'm a complex fucking uh, uh, animal. I'm not your fucking dog. And well, what is the situation? <clears throat> what is the situation like? Is it the person that? Oh, comes the only in? people that ever say that shit. The only ones that say it, the dog or cat was here first are the ones that own a shitty dog or a shitty cat. That is that is true because I mean, dude, if you're going into a relationship and somebody has an animal, if you're not cool with that, you're gonna put it up front right away. Yeah. Everybody's gonna know what the score is, unless. You go into that situation and then find out later yeah. that this dog or cat has been either trained very badly yeah. or not trained at all. No, I'll tell you what, I will never play second fiddle to a disobedient cock sucking cat or dog. It's not nope. gonna, and that, whenever I hear that shit, there's some nasty part of the back of my brain that says, I dare you to use that sentence on me someday. I dare you to say the de- the yep. dog or cat was here first. I'll be like, cool, now I know where I stand. I'm the one that actually fucking talks to you. That's the goddamn difference. Yeah, and, and you know what? If you're gonna if you're gonna put an animal before me, that's what, what I'm saying. What chance do I have against you with other people? That's what I'm saying. So it shows really where you value me at, mm-hmm. which is fucking crazy, and it's ridiculous <sighs> that. You know, look, if, if if people came over to my house and my cat was a complete asshole, yeah. I would expect a good friend will check you and let you know, like, mm-hmm. dude, that's not it's not cool, man. Yeah. I can't just like you know if your kid is shitty. Like Louis C. K. had a bit, I think it was about his sister's kid, where mm-hmm. his his sister's kid threw sand in her drink. Yeah. And you know, it's like that. Like if you know if you know that's what the situation is like, dude, yeah. you need to Make shit happen according to whatever the situation is. Like, don't act like that's normal. No. I'll straight up drown your puppy in a fucking tub if it means I can sit on the couch quietly for (laughs) five more minutes. I don't care. I love... And by the way, I love animals. I fucking do. I really, really fucking love animals. They are innocent creatures. They don't know what they fucking do. I get it. They are a product of how they're trained and stuff. I totally get that stuff. And obviously what I just said is a joke. But seriously, don't... I, stop making me feel like I'm less important than a fucking animal. And I, by the way, it's never happened to me. Nobody's ever said that shit to me. Just I've, the idea. I've, of no, it. I've heard people say it about other people, and I'm like, if anybody ever said that to me, I'd be like, I'm out. I'm that done. would be. See, I I went through this with Jenna a little bit. I mean, if we're gonna be honest, when we were when we were fucking searching, people that call them fur babies, those are the ones you gotta watch out for. Ugh. Just oh, so cute. I had to show you the papers. Just look. Just just. 
It's like, good morning. Show you my fur, baby girls. Yeah, that's gross, dude. Don't do that. If you're if you're out there right now and you refer to your animal as a fur baby, people that know you hate you. <laughs> yeah. And they're not going to tell you. I'm going to go back to what I was saying before, though, about the difference between kid and, and animal. Yeah. And the reason why 50 times harder to raise a fucking animal. An animal stays in that stage permanently where you have to make sure it survives no matter what the fuck is going on. It's like a toddler. Yep, all the way through its life, it's like a toddler. That's yeah. the difference between humans and animals. Is A, a human will eventually gain the ability to self-preserve. Right. Animals never really... Do. I mean, they, they become dependent on you, really. They do. Just The throughout more the whole time lives. goes on, the more dependent they get. Yes, exactly. It's crazy. I mean, dude, I've had this conversation... So, but, uh, I'm sorry. No, I don't mean no, to... No, but, no, like, no, no. Pow power to all the pet owners. Uh, like, I love you that that take care of their animals so fucking well. And the well. ones that rescue animals, especially. Fuck yeah, man. We, I love you to death. I really do. Now, going back to what I was saying before... If you own a fucking animal and you can't take care of that goddamn thing or you don't bother to try to raise it and it becomes an asshole. You're a piece of shit. I, yeah, I'm going to, not only are you a piece of shit, I'm going to tell you you've raised an asshole of a fucking animal. And if you tell me, well, you could leave if you don't like pepper. Like, Bye. fuck you, I'm out. Yeah. Bye. Bye, bitch. Fucking ridiculous. Dude, it's, it, it, it complicates things too because when we were searching for a fucking place to live before we got into this one, I had to say to Jen a hundred times, like, dude, there's a good chance this cat's going to have to hit the bricks, man. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to And she just did not want to accept the idea of that. Yeah. Lucky for her, she didn't have to. Yeah. But I would be willing to bet money that if that would have happened, yeah. we would not even be in a thing anymore. Yeah. It's a tough call, man. That stuff, like... See, this is what... And again... Just like I was talking about with having a kid right now, this is why I would never ever. I, I I'm so I love that other people do it in place of me, but I could never ever rescue a pet right now. Yeah, I just can't because I know what that means. That means having to shut down certain sectors of my life to take care of another living thing. I am not ready, or really, maybe I'm not built for that part. Some people I'm, are. I'm great with kids. I'm great with animals, but it's always been from a distance. Of course. Like, I, I'm, I, I'm not trying to have to take direct care of things. Like, of course, if I'm watching somebody's animals and stuff, I'm happy to do that stuff. It's, a, it's not like I despise animals or I despise kids. It's just I know I don't want any of my own. Right. You know? Well, I mean, dude, it is a fucking... It is an adjustment, dude. Yeah. It really is. To get used to doing... Like, knowing you gotta feed them. The panic... That I feel when we're out somewhere and I go, fuck, did I forget to feed the cat? Yeah, yeah, And yeah, I yeah. remember, wait, nope, I didn't. But just that, that moment <laughs> of anxiety. So I have too many of those in my head already. I have uh, too many, like, anxiety triggers to add another gigantic red one to them. Uh, you know what I mean? And then you just, like, the whole time we were gone in Florida, bro, like, Jen's sister was watching the cat and all I was thinking about while we were gone. Like, it wasn't a steady every second of the day thing. But there was... <laughs> A decent amount of times in a day where I would stop to go, fuck, I hope everything is all right. Yeah, of course. I can't even imagine having a child and calling a stranger yeah. through a certified website or whatever to look after my kid while I go and have a night out. Dude, I do the same thing. Like, And, and my girlfriend doesn't know this. Her mother doesn't fucking know this. But like, whenever... Like, when, when her mother was working especially and, and my girlfriend and I would go out to do something... Like, I, in the back of my head, and this is when Toretto, the other dog, used to live there, too. I fucking hated that dog. I, I still do. I hate that dog. But the whole fucking time we'd be out, I'd be like, shit, I hope Toretto and Harley are okay. You know? Yeah. Like, and I, it, it would, uh, and I'm just like, god damn it. I gotta, now I got that to worry about, you know? <laughs> it's, it's tough, man. It really is fucking tough. But, I mean, to the people that have kids and that have animals, the, we salute you. Fuck yeah, if man. you were a breeder, do it right or don't do it at all. Yeah, yeah, all right? yeah. And the, if, going back to your point earlier, if you know that you're not the kind of person that is equipped to handle a fucking animal, yeah. don't go out and adopt one and then two days later try to pawn it off on anybody and everybody that you fucking can. So this is, I didn't, and before, like, it's not 
that easy, right? Like having to fucking give up an animal. That shit is really tough. So I feel for I feel for Jen in that regard. I also feel for you because it's like what well, you feel stuck, like you can't fucking get stuff done. And I actually have real life experience with that through my brother. My brother, with the work that he does, he's frequently asked by business agents, you know, I'm gonna need you to work out of state for a couple months and stuff like this. And you can't he do it. never had that option. He he's been limited for a very long time because of his dog. He can't leave that dog for huge periods of time. The only time that that wasn't true, I can't remember where he was working. Um, but he was staying with my father, I think it was like a year ago. And, uh, my father thankfully was able to watch the dog. So like, he didn't have to worry about it that time, but the most, he had to shut down all kinds of jobs that he wanted to take on. He had to not come to functions, to holidays and things like this because of the dog. And it's like, that's, that's exactly why I won't do it. I don't give a fuck how selfish that sounds. I'm not shutting down my whole life. For another living thing. And that is a commitment, though, dude. But that's saying, you know, I mean, unfortunately, he's doing it right. Fuck yeah, he is. Oh, dude, my brother, my brother is attached to this dog like people are attached to other people. Definitely. He is one of those fucking, those, those animal owners that's in love with their pet. But he's not like, my fur baby. Like, he's not that kind. Yeah, no, like, he's the opposite he, of it, but still the same. It's his companion. I mean, it's yeah. his hardcore fucking companion. Like, dude, we... We wound up fostering an animal for a short period of time. And I think I have a way too big of a heart because I get attached, especially to animals. I do too. Very quickly. I do too. And that's why I don't want to be around them too. Yep. Because I see one and I'm just like, I want you forever. Dude, there was a fucking Australian shepherd that one of Jen's friends wound up wanting to get rid of. So, I mean, they were mistreating the dog, dude. They were fucking, they would put it in a fucking crate. And just leave it in the crate all day. Australian Shepherds are not small fucking dogs either. They're very big. Yeah. And they need a lot of exercise and care, dude. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, they will tear your shit apart. But right, long story short, the dog winds up coming over to our fucking house. And she was goddamn beautiful, bro. Yeah. Beautiful. Fucking. I remember when you guys were watching her. Oh, my God, dude. She was at the house... For maybe a week. The first day, rambunctious all over the place. I'm like, oh, this is the worst decision I've ever fucking made signing off on this. Mm -hmm. By day three, she's sleeping. The, not even by day three. By n night two, she's in the fucking bed with us. Oh as God. big as this savage is. She's as big as I am. <laughs> taking up most of the fucking bed. But I'm like, what? she's been in a cage her whole life. I'm, I'm, I feel myself like... Almost started to tear up right now. Bro, she goes from a fucking cage to like I'm I'm hanging with people, dude. I'm yeah. sleeping in the bed. I'm one of the guys. Yeah. You know, so we wound up looking to give her away because we couldn't keep her where we were staying, even I would have loved to. Yeah. This broke my fucking heart. I remember it then. Yeah. Yep. Dude couple of hippie people came to get her and it's not a it's, it's the actual term they were hippies they own a farm out by Atlantic City someplace they came to get the dog they had three other dogs with them so it was like oh you know well she'll be good we've owned Australians before and yeah. we have acres of property and shit so it'll be perfect for her at the end of all of this dude they go to wrap it up they put the dog in the back of the fucking van dude yeah. And the dog jumped out of the van and uh, started running back towards us. Oh, uh, fuck. I fucking, I'm not even, it, it was a week. I think we had her for a week. And I'm not bullshitting you when she jumped out of the fucking car, dude. I had to, I cried. I yeah. fucking cried yeah. like a baby bitch because I, you fucking. <laughs> I get it. I get it. I do. I was like, oh. You almost, I, you got me feeling fucking salty in the eyeballs right now. <laughs> like, dude, I even was like, dude, can you send. Can you send, like, I just want to know that she's all right if you can send videos oh, and shit. Oh, that's awesome. And yeah. they were shitty about it, though. Uh, they were like, oh, why would you? What do you mean, why? Just because yeah. she was in my house for a week. Like, I want to make sure you're taking care of her. Now, on the flip side to that, I guess you can say that they may have been thinking, like, oh, uh, what do you not to trust us? Yeah, yeah, keeping tabs. But yeah, I yeah. just want to know... That, like, she's okay and she's yeah, living yeah. a great life. Now, granted... Oh, that sounds like a happy ending to me. I'm sure she's living a fucking awesome life. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, dude, she's in two acres of land. They have her in a fucking... Those are the ones you want to leave them with. 
Definitely. You know, they have her in a, a, a training school specifically designed for Australian Shepherds. That's awesome. Because I think one of their kids has autism or some shit. So he actually oh. took up care of the dog. Yeah. And they, they're tight. And yeah, they yeah. bonded now. So, I mean, at least that's good. She goes yeah. to move on and live. So when he's not sucking on his own fist, he's taking care of the dog? <laughs> exactly. That's pretty cool. Fucking window liquor. <laughs> Yeah. When he's not eating the buttons off his shirt, he's hanging out with the dog. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And my mom's autistic, so fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I don't know if we we've talked about this before, but you guys have to understand we're gonna bring our senses of humor into Ooh. this. We say shit. We know it's horrible, yep. but it's a joke. And look, we're. We're not saying anything that you're not saying to people behind closed doors, I feel like. Yeah. I think, you know, I forget who it was that I was listening to. It was Bill Burr. I was listening to a Bill Burr (coughs) podcast, and he was talking about political correctness. And he was like, I'm pretty sure it's like 8% of the population from everybody that I've talked to and gathered information from that has the problem, while everybody else is like, the fuck is the big goddamn deal? Yeah. So, you know, I'm pretty sure that we're just saying things out loud that you would all never say because you don't want to destroy your social lives. I don't have that danger in my life. So I'm not really worried about it. So when we talk about kids that'll rip the meat away from the apple and eat the core, yeah, that's you know, (laughs) we we do that because we know we're alienated forever anyway. And besides, dude, look, my my nephew, Jen's nephew, I look, I was there when the kid was born. I held him in my fucking arms right after he flew out of his mom's twat. He might as well be my fucking nephew. Yeah. So look, he has autism in all seriousness. So, I mean, as much as we joke, I think it's important by joking about these things, yeah. you bring light to these things and it forces people to recognize that they exist and just oh, to yeah. clue you in uh, as people that have shit wrong with them between mm-hmm. both of us or all three of us, if you throw Jen in the fucking mix, we have, we have enough issues to go around. And I think absolutely. that... Premature, right here. Me too. Tourette's syndrome, depression, anxiety. Yeah, and you already know my deal: cerebral palsy, multiple sclerosis, and a gang yeah. of other shit. If God drew everybody, I would have been like he—he he would have wrote. If if he drew everybody in a doodle book first, I would have been the word "fuck" that he scribbled over. <laughs> that's 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 what I am. So. We were the leftover pieces of clay yeah. that didn't fit in anything else. Mm-hmm. That's what happened. Absolutely. But dude, I think. I love when a stand-up comedian or somebody like that <clears throat> breaks ground and makes jokes about disabilities and shit. I mean, obviously, if it's done right, if you're not up there, you know, there's a certain way that you can deliver shit. Kind of like how we do. Like, we break balls and call the kid a window licker or a button eater or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're just fucking around. But at the same time, I think that makes people with autism feel good. Yeah. In the sense of like, okay... I'm just like everybody else. Yeah. I can get my balls broken just like everybody else can. It makes them feel almost as good as when they accidentally kill a cat while they're petting it. <laughs> Bringing it back to the fucking... Oh, yeah. I, I wasn't even trying to. Yeah. It, it, it almost feels as good as when they start eating their pillows. Bucket, dude, I did... That wasn't good. I dropped that, Kevin. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I did, uh, I did cut out a little bit of that and threw it in the highlight reel. What's that? I threw yeah. in... It was a perfect segue. It was two separate parts that I wound up putting together where you were like, if you didn't know, we get meta on this channel. And then you were like, yeah, put that in your brain and think it. And then immediately after that, the next clip is, if you want to know what my brain is like in here, (laughs) it's like gremlins smoking crack on broken unicycles. You know, that I, I put those one after the other. <laughs> so that fit in really well together in the fucking highlight reel, dude. Fucking A, man. Which way did you guys... I know I'm, like, totally breaking the topic in half right now, but which which route did you guys take? Did you go over... What was it? I think it's 295 to 95 South? Is yeah, it? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Well, Google... Well, this should actually be a topic. Fuck whatever I was just going to say. Google Maps... 
is a fucking pain in the dick, bro. Because we put in the direction. See, you are... I feel like everybody except me has issues with Google. I have never had issues with Google Maps. Dude, he puts in... My brother puts in the fucking address. It's supposed to take us from Jersey through Delaware and then to go around on the I-95 into Florida. Mm -hmm. Instead, it brings us into the fucking pits of Philly at two in the fucking morning. Oh. Like, going through the hood hood, dude. No, we're fucking not. I'm like, why, do you know where we are? He's like, dude, we're in fucking Philly. There's no fucking reason for us to be right here right now. God yeah. damn, dude. Mm -hmm. the outside of that, the only gripe I really would have is the GPS will say, you know, coming up, make a right turn. Yeah. What it means to say is, Stay to your right. Yeah. Doesn't mean get off on the fucking exit, but it doesn't say that. See, that's what... I think... See, I thought they fixed that because... <clears throat> I think what it started saying is slate right for basically staying to the right. Right. Instead of right turn. Like, it'll say slate right, which means just stay where you are and sort of just follow the road. See, now, I, you're probably right about that. But we were using the... We were using the rented cars GPS, which okay. I think may have had an outdated version of Google on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we wound up making the trip a little bit longer than it needed to be. I did it when I first, when I drove down to Jacksonville. I was driving down at 2 o'clock in the fucking morning. All I did, Ugh. the only thing I fucking did wrong was I missed one goddamn exit. That's all it takes. I, I drove past it at, at the last minute. Oh, no. And I was like... Okay, no big deal. I'm on a straight stretch of road. I'll just just wh where can I turn around? You can't. <laughs> no turning around. I had to drive, and I'm not fucking Probably kidding when I say hours. this. two hours. A half hour forward from that exit Ugh. to to make a turn back onto the road to drive backwards another half hour all the way back to where I was. And then make another fucking turn to get back on that road to drive. So an hour, what did I say, 45 minutes? Yeah. Hour and a half extra because I had to fucking do that loop. That's fucking disgusting. Yep. Now, yep. as much as the, I, and now this might get nerdy for some of you guys, but this is a serious question. With all of the travel that goes on on 95, yeah. why would they not have the ability for somebody that may miss a turn to get off on a fucking this wasn't ninety five. This oh. wasn't ninety five. It was okay. two. I think it was two ninety five south. It was when you. I'm trying to think because there's a bridge, or no, it's a tunnel. It's a tunnel that you end up having to take. Where the lights are all yes. on the top. Yep, I know that, that one. It was right after that tunnel. There was an exit that I was supposed to grab that I didn't. Okay. The 95 I had no problem with, but really the only reason I had no problem with 95 is because 95 literally is a straight shot all the way down to Florida. Yeah. Like you, you're just driving through, what is it? I think it's it's Maryland, yep. Virginia, North Carolina, yep. South Carolina, Georgia, and then Florida. Yep. So, like, it's just a straight shot all the way through. Like, dude, and the, the 95 is the... Oh, that road is so fucking boring, dude. It is the elephant's graveyard for fucking 18-wheeler truck tires, dude. Oh, I know. <laughs> it is unfucking believable It's the elephant's graveyard. It's unbelievable. It dude... He, he actually wound up fucking up the rental car because yeah, yeah. he hit... Oh, no, uh, you'll see more shredded rubber than a brothel. It's fucking crazy. Fu yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Absolutely. Dude, the last time, now that I think about it, the first time I went down to Florida with him when he was moving his mom, we were in the fucking U-Haul truck, and we watched in real time... I don't think I've ever shit my... I think I may have shit my pants harder one other time in my life. Mm -hmm. Twice, never mind. Where... There was a FedEx truck that was next to us on 95. Yeah. The tire broke out, and they were riding on the fucking rim of oh, their car. And you were near it? Yeah. In the lane right next to us. Oh. Sparks everywhere, and it looked like Ghost Rider was next to us, dude. The cloud of fucking smoke that was coming out of that tire, and this motherfucker wasn't even looking to get off the shoulder. Oh, yeah, no, I would have broke. I would I would have seriously dropped down to like 10 miles per hour and fucking stayed away from that, it. Not this motherfucker, dude. Dude, yeah, they just right. like, oh well, that sucks. Like, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Get the fuck out of the way. Yep, no. Nope. And I don't care wherever you are in the world. If you come to Jersey, Florida, let me talk to you for a second. You think we're fucking nuts? Nobody drives crazier 
than people in fucking Florida drive. Wait, for real? I thought New I've Yorkers. I've never had that issue. I thought New Yorkers were fucking crazy. Yeah, they are. Florida is fucking nuts. Now, it wow. might have just been... Where you were. It, yeah, it might have been where we were. I've heard rumors about Miami area, too, about drivers being horrible down there. Because there was... I saw the... I saw the the parkway signs or the interstate signs rather for Miami. Okay. We yeah. were going over to the wedding, so I guess it's possible that. And then there was construction all on the fucking. Ice. There were literally four or five exits at a cliff that were closed. Wow. So I think a bunch of people just didn't know where the fuck they were going. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. everybody is all over the fucking place. It's pretty scary though, man. I have to say, it really fucking is. That shit was nuts. Yeah, 95, man. Like, the only states I can say I enjoyed driving through on 95 were probably Virginia and South Carolina. Because at least there was stuff to see. Actually, I'll say, like, the the ass end of North Carolina into South Carolina was the interesting stretch. Just because they have south of the border and everything there, too. Dude, those fucking guys and their billboards. Oh, I know. They're fucking ridiculous. Yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah. I hated that place, by the way. I stopped when I was on my way down to Jacksonville. I was not impressed. I don't... Really? I think I might have just caught it on a bad day. Yeah. Because they're supposed to have, like... There was supposed to be, like, this rush of... Act- Everybody that told me that uh, when I was going down, they were like... Dude, you have to stop at South Dakota. Some of the best restaurants, this, that, the other thing. And I was like, cool. And then I got there, and the place was essentially fucking abandoned. Like, there was nobody there. Nope. It still looks like that. Every really? time that I've passed by it, which granted is maybe only two or three times. Yeah, yeah. Dead. Yeah. Completely like, dead. There was nothing happening. Nothing going on at all. And they had a hat store. Like, what the fuck am I honestly going to do there? Yeah, really. I mean, right. what the fuck, dude? We have lids. We don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking, no, nobody needs lids either, for the record. But um, yeah, ninety five. I'll tell the worst state to drive through is North Carolina for boredom. Yep. Because there's nothing to fucking say in North Carolina, and then the worst state for cops is Georgia. Fuck. <gasps> that reminds me, dude. We got pulled over. Oh, I know. Uh, in Georgia? No, no, no. Uh, okay, South okay. Carolina. Yeah, no. I, it's those two. Okay. So, the ass end of South Carolina or toward the I'm beginning? I'm pretty sure. The, the fu- they go almost exclusively after people from out of state. Dude. I only saw out of state license plates and they were getting pulled over by the fucking hundreds all the way through Georgia. So we had we had Florida plates on the rental. Oh, nice. Okay. And uh, But we're still, technically, we would be looked at as out of state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we're in South Carolina. Cop pulls over. Now, my brother drives like a fucking asshole. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he knows this. He would probably say that he's an aggressive driver. A lot of people are. I don't even know how you fucked that up because I know that after, I think it's after Maryland, I think once you hit Virginia, not only are you not dealing with tolls, but there, I think the, the speed limit's 75 the entire way. Yeah, he got stopped because, all right, this is, the, this is an, a, a truck, a commercial truck in front of him, and this is his car. All right, so Kevin put the mouse down on on the desk. He's got it pointing uh, long ways, and then he has... uh, (laughs) Yeah, let me flip it around. So he was basically a half a car's length away from the truck in front of him. Okay. okay. And when he got pulled over, the cop in South Carolina... Yeah. So it was like, dude, you can't be that close (coughs) to a fucking Mm -hmm. commercial truck for safety reasons. No, they can't see you. Yeah, well, that too. But he's like, I got to stop you because that's not safe. He's yeah. like, so, you know, the most interesting part of this stop for me was the interaction with the police officer. Yeah. Because, I mean, he's talking to him and we see the cop is animated. His hands are flying all over the place. We think he's about to get arrested for some fucking reason. Mm-hmm. Just because, I mean, isn't that always the fear when you get pulled over, oh, yeah. especially when you're out of state? Dude, I have never... I, okay, so I've been pulled over, and I'll know why I'm getting pulled over. Like, I remember once I didn't have my my insurance up to date. Yeah. So I knew he was pulling me over because he probably scanned me for my insurance. But in the back of my head, I was like, what if I did something super illegal and I'm going to jail right now? Which is the most stupid thing you could, think. you could possibly have. But it's real. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, he fucking, he comes up to the car. He already talked to him. They worked out whatever the issue is at this point. He comes up to the passenger side. I'm sitting in there, and he's like, hey, how's it going? 
nice as shit. Already, I'm completely thrown off because yeah. I'm used to being treated like a piece of garbage mm -hmm. by cops around here. And he's like, so, where are you guys coming from? Like, oh, my niece's wedding and this, that, and the other thing. And he's like, all right, and this is? I go, all right, look. Now, I know none of you guys know what my brother looks like. We don't look anything alike. That's if not you, true. I'm sorry, Kevin. You don't think so? Yeah, no. I'm gonna because you've said this to me before. Okay, your brother <clears throat> looks like if you got trapped on a desert island for like <laughs> a year. That's a, a overgrown eyebrows, fucking looking like a, a like a native. Honestly, like somebody yeah. that crawled out of the fucking the underbrush and said, "Where's my coconuts?" Okay, like, was, well, that's fair. Yeah, but I'm th in my head, I'm thinking. You know, there's no way that this guy would automatically connect the dots and think that we're related. I just, I just thought, <laughs> your brother looks like the Cal Droga version of you from <laughs> fucking Game of Thrones. <laughs> like he's just, he's the wild, like barbaric version of Kevin. Then he's like, dude, you know, uh, where are you coming from and all that shit. I'm like, all right, so just so you know, we are. That's my, that's my half brother. We are related. You know, we're like. So he's like, oh, so that's your brother, like your friend. I go, no, 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 that's my brother, like, that's my family. Yeah. He was like... Maybe that's what builds resentment with your brother. You ever think of that? Well, no, dude, you want to talk about building resentment? He once introduced me that's to Cal somebody... Dro that's Cal Drogo, by the way. Oh, uh, okay. That's your brother. Fucking Aquaman. Without the without the muscle tits. Definitely. Yeah. And put dreads on him. Yeah, yep. Fucking, I don't think that... I don't think he's as emotional as I am. I, first of all... Not only do I, I'm such an asshole, I can't not fidget. Uh, not only am I completely on the opposite side of how you feel about it, Yeah. but I feel like, again, and I was talking to you about this downstairs, you both probably have similar feelings about one another, like, oh, the other one's not that fucking interested in me. You guys gotta fucking stop that shit. Seriously, man. Yeah. Family's fucking everything. Like, you got toxic family, you don't talk to them. It makes sense. But if you have people that aren't tax toxic in your family, you should be making a point to fucking talk. I mean, it just makes it weird. Is that picking up properly? Because that's really low. I hope so. Because it's been like that the entire time. Let's do a part three. Cut this really quick. Let's take a listen. So, real quick, we just had a, a panic moment in real time. Yeah. <laughs> because of the volume bar uh, in uh, OBS. I almost said USC for some fucking reason. I don't even USC. know where the hell that came from or what it even means. No University idea. University of South Carolina. Well, yeah, maybe yeah. that's what it is, dude. Yeah. Or Fuck. Southern California. I don't know which one it is. But, you know, the the bar is not really picking up that well, so it looks like it's not picking up the audio at all whatsoever, but it sounds okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the oh, yeah, the fucking cop, dude. He's like, all right, so where are you coming from? Where are you going? He's like, you guys got IDs on you? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah. He's like, all right, I'll take this. I'll be right back. Takes him, brings IDs back, he goes, here you go, guys. Have a nice day. That's it. Wow. No bullshit, no get out of the car. Holy shit, it was a cop that was actually concerned for your safety. Yeah. What the fuck? I, dude, it was They a, do exist. I know, it was a fucking experience, dude. That reminds me of the m and That's commercial. why I said it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I had to fucking throw that in there, He dude. does exist. They do exist. Fucking great, man. Ow. So you think Santa will like these red and green M&Ms? I don't know. I never met the guy. <laughs> he does exist. They do exist. Ugh. Uh, Santa? Car eyelashes are stupid. End of story. No need to do a deep dive on that. <laughs> Not a whole lot to talk about right there, right? Yeah. Like, those probably went out with Janko jeans. Stop it. When the time traveler is looking at you going, bro, it's a bad decision. Yeah. You might want to rethink yeah. what it is that you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What did you see it on? Like a VW Beetle or something? Because that's I know that's like the classic car for those. It, it wasn't... I want to say it was a Nissan. On a fucking Nissan? It was a Nissan or a Benz. It was something obscene. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I've only ever seen them on VW Beetles. And they Beatles. were purple. Or is that true? What what's the other a Mini Cooper? Mini too. Coopers. Maybe yeah, that's what I'm famous for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was obscene, dude. That's they were so purple stupid. too. Oh and then why? Do you think that adds character to your fucking car stupid? No, that tells me that I guarantee I would make it forty seconds into a conversation with that person before I was just like, 
Oh, uh, either suck my dick or let me leave. Bro, like, cancer I, I just want patients. To be done. Cancer patients look at your car and are disgusted by you. Yeah. They're like, bitch, I don't have eyebrows and I don't have eyebrows on my fucking headlights. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> There's a more better way to put that I, I, I together. Don't, I knew what you're going for, but <laughs> man, like, a that cancer sentence. patient probably looks at them and says, <laughs> yeah, like that fucking sentence just went through chemo. That's what just happened oh, right there. Shit. Damn, that didn't get what I thought it was going to get at oh. all. Oh. A little too dark. Sorry. It's all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I don't have. Unfortunately, you got a beautiful fucking topic sheet over there. I don't really have uh, super huge news. I guess probably the news. Oh, I said I wanted to talk about like the marketing sort of stuff. Really quick, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this short because I know a lot of people aren't gonna be interested in this. This isn't a marketing podcast, um, but I had sort of a revelation this week. Uh, did you have anything else you wanted to say about? Well, I was gonna. It was other topics that we could segue into after this. Okay, which are you know side shit anyway that can go into a deeper conversation. But go ahead. I'll try to keep it short. So, um, I, I like I had this huge revelation this week, and and the thing is, I've had these moments where I've sort of. I, I, my brain has entertained the thought of going deeper into this kind of thinking. Well, can we, what kind of thinking is that? So I'm going to get to it, but okay. it, it would reel back because it was like, no, there's no way it works like that. But the good news is I really think it totally fucking does. So I went in for another interview uh, this week with a company that had already interviewed me, had already gone well. They were having their top candidates back in to kind of like dive a little bit deeper into their their history with with marketing and everything and i ended up having this wonderful con I, I really hope i get this job now because i had this wonderful conversation with the ceo of the company uh he came from marketing before he was doing what he was doing he sort of led up the the data analytics side of the the marketing for what he was doing before so for idiots like me that means that he was looking at the company's sales numbers and shit like that he, he, not only was he looking at how, how many units were selling but he was also looking at what kind of people were buying when they were buying like d diving into all the data and making basically sort of educated decisions based on those numbers okay for like how to sell what to write Things like this. Good. I gotta pee real quick, so I'm gonna be able to hear you okay. talking. You just probably won't be able to hear me on the mic. Okay. Um. So I end up having this great conversation with the guy, and what I had always sort of assumed was the case with marketing was basically confirmed to me by a dude that's been doing it for a really long time, and that is that as much knowledge is out there. Uh, uh, about marketing and it doesn't matter what kind of marketing it is it's either traditional or you know digital uh inbound outbound whatever the case might be um i had always said before this that i kind of viewed marketing as more of an art than a science in the sense that it's sort of like a big sort of at in at different times in different ways things will change like depending on what you do um, but it's never going to be like this, this thing, this concrete thing that you can basically be dependent upon, like working a certain way every time. So what I ended up figuring out was, was really the truth about marketing. I, I had always had this inkling in the back of my head that it worked like this. But the logical side of me always thought, okay, with marketing, there are definitive ways to do things that if you, if you follow the formulas and you follow the methodologies that already exist, you're going there 100 you're going to see an uh, a marketing roi which is return on investment for whatever kind of work you're doing in marketing and i just don't know them yet i don't know the proven formulas that's all that's all it basically is well no, wait, hold on let me pause you for a second and yeah. say now is this formula is this different for every company or is it basically a broad stroke in every business so it can what let me let me think of how best to answer that sorry so, if I, I took you off here. no 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 it's i'm trying to think of how best to answer it because there is sort of a high level version of all of these kinds of formulas like whether it's around content marketing email marketing whatever kind of marketing you might be doing there is sort of like a, a high level template for all this stuff but you you 
you're required to get granular based on what you're selling and and who you're selling to and things like this. So know your product and know your demo. Yeah, you, that's what it really comes down to a lot. And but now here's the thing, I had also always thought that, and I didn't dare put too much credence into this thought because it felt lazy and it felt like I was just telling myself it's okay to fuck up, which it is by the way. Like that's how you learn. But um, I had always sort of thought to myself. Yeah, but how much of this is hard science, like 100% guaranteed ROI with what you do? And how much of this is you try and try and try until you find like a good way for that specific campaign or that specific product or that specific sales period to make your sales happen better and things like this. Well, I had this conversation with the CEO and it turns out I was totally fucking right about that little inkling the entire time. It, the, what you're doing most of the time as a marketer <laughs> is is failing you're you're failing you're a weatherman it, it really you're you're making that believe it or not that analogy is not far off you're making highly educated guesses based on proven sort of formulas but you're never guaranteed to see that outcome so what you do is you refine that approach over time by failing you fail and you learn something from that failure every time. So that's what, there's a there's a thing that you do in marketing called A-B testing, which is you- Focus groups? No, 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 no. It, it, you take two ways of doing something and you do, you either deploy them both at the same time or you deploy A first and then if A is not working, you try B and you see if it has better results. So like that's what marketing is. It, it I had this conversation with this guy and I, I kind of, like I said, I kind of knew this was true the whole time, but to, just to have somebody that's been in the game for a while, basically confirm it to me that we're really all just failing until we're not failing, until we have enough failures on the list to be able to say, okay, here's the shit that didn't work, so let's approach it this way this time, to have that eventually work, and then you're seeing success. It was, it was something I needed to see. It was something I, I rather, I'm sorry, it was something I needed to hear because I was so fucking down on myself for so long about, because I mean, I have, I failed multiple marketing campaigns, but I always felt like I'm failing it because I'm not disseminating the formulas that exist properly in my head. Like it's my fault because I'm not understanding how to do this properly. No, the, the sad fact, but also the relieving fact of the matter is everybody is failing at marketing until you're not failing. That's that's really what it comes down to. Okay, so this brings a big question up for me, which you said basically the whole thing is failing, right? That's what you're Yeah, I'm, I'm, that's like kind of a, a fun way to, like I, I'm being a little bit clever and, and stupid when I say that, but. Right, but no, but I mean. But I it's would, true. Yeah, so but um, my immediate question would be, what makes the difference between being able to fail short term and recovering with a win and failing to the point where you're hemorrhaging money and you're going to lose your business completely. Is there a road that kind of forks off in the middle where one leads into the other? Or is it just you've ignored the signs and because you didn't go with a plan B, C, or D, now you're failing? That's, well, I mean, you basically just said it. Like, it's sort of, if I'm understanding what you're saying correctly, if we're to, like, if we're focusing strictly on the, you're failing the whole time and you start hemorrhaging and then now all of a sudden you have no money to even spend on marketing and you're fucked, that is, it's the rule of insanity. Like, and if you're, if you're continuously doing the same thing over and over again and you're seeing the same result, that's and That's, and it's a it's negative good. result. Yeah, yeah. this is good. You then need to it, change it. then you're an asshole. I mean, you shouldn't like the point of of campaigns in marketing, which that's that's what marketing is. Like you're always setting up different campaigns for whatever you're selling, product, service, doesn't matter what it is. I mean, you if you're sitting there and you're doing a static thing the whole time, and the static thing is failing, and you're like, fuck it, stay the course. You're a shitty mar. I mean, to, shitty I, anything. Yeah, I don't even know if you're a shitty marketer. I think you're just a shitty thinker like i don't think you think properly now is there a c level to this thing now what i mean by that is is there a certain number that you're gonna base out on all of the time when you're unveiling say you do have plan a plan b yeah you put out a you see certain results do you then go off of a's numbers and say okay with plan b we need to see 
at least A's numbers or higher, or if it's under that, then we just scrap it all together. Well, you come okay. So you're. It's really weird that you're. That's that's cool because you're you're thinking about things that actually have definitions in marketing. So what you're talking about is metrics. You're talking about uh, th there are two different terms, right? You have metrics, which are their tactical decisions that you're making. So like that's like. Um, you know, let's change the copy on this email or let's make the landing page a little bit more user friendly. And then you have KPI, which is key performance indicators, which is strategy. That's like the whole reason you're changing the copy on the email is to make the KPI of conversion happen more from people basically, or I'll, I'll, I'll make it a little bit more realistic. So the metric would be email copy changing. Okay. And the KPI would be click through rate. So oh, okay. like you change the copy in order to increase the click through rate. So you're talking about metrics and KPIs. The, yes, you absolutely. So what you do, those 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 KPIs are set in place before you even deploy A or B. So you say to yourself, okay, this is what the this is what the campaign is for. And do you look at other bit real quick? I, I know I keep throwing. Questions yeah, I want. Here. I actually want to finish the answer because otherwise it's not going to be understood. Go so the you you set up your metrics and your KPIs first, so that there's a, there's a definable goal for either A or B. And then yeah, if you deploy A and you're not hitting those numbers, you then deploy B. And then hopefully at B you're hitting those numbers you're looking for. And then let's say you do hit those numbers, then you do something where you polish it even more. And you double those numbers, and you keep you keep working off of that, and increasing your marketing or ROI. I think it's actually called MROI uh, for marketing return on investment. But go ahead, ask your yeah your question. I was gonna say so if you're going into if you're first time in this business in any business, no yeah. matter what it is. Yeah. Now, are you looking at something similar to your product and seeing what those numbers turn out to try to figure out what to expect and then. When your copy is being written out, yeah, where can you base for somebody that may be starting out in business? Yeah, yeah. Where can you figure out? Like, I have a product. I say I want to sell skateboards. I don't know. That's a new product. Nobody's ever heard of it before. Where can I come up with a solid place to figure out where my copy should begin? And how do I know that I'm heading in the right direction if sure. it's never been done? Sure. So you're. You're talking about content strategy at a very high level. Like that's at a high from a high level it's content strategy. From like boots on the ground level, it's what you're doing, you're doing a lot of stuff to figure that out. So absolutely positively, you're looking at other brands and you're saying, "Okay, this is how this is this is the brand voice that they're using for their copy. Um, this is this is the way that they're doing their branding as far as like user experience goes, the interface, like the, the way that they're displaying the product, the way they're talking about the product, the way that they're engaging with their user base about the product. You're doing what's called, again, you did, that's why I started smiling because you're talking about like basically a competitive analysis. You're looking at what other brands have done in those areas and you're looking at, you're setting up, I mean, for me, I would set up a SWAT list, which is a strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats list. Uh, so I would know you're now I'm a layman and I don't know what you're talking about. So I want to make sure. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I'm following you because if I'm following you, then chances are people at home are following you. I'll explain everything. But that basically means then your your positives, your negatives. And then the last couple of things you said, I know you said threats was in there. Yeah. Now that's your competition, right? Yes. People that you're going up against. Well, this is the threats are within one competitor okay. so like you, the SWAT list like let's say you, like, what did you say you said skateboard brand yeah Jesus I don't even know who makes I skateboards I just threw something um, out there like say well fucking, let's do uh, shoes shoes are easier yeah okay so like I'll say like Vans and DCs that's what I was just I was just gonna say Vans and DCs yeah so what I would what I would look at is on the Vans end and on the DC end I would look at the strengths of Vans the weaknesses of Vans the opportunities meaning the things that they're missing that we could add to our stuff. Right. So like if it, there, there's something there that I see in the Vans brand that they're not doing and it gives me a competitive edge if I do what they're missing. 
Kind of like how DCs, at least in my opinion, seem to have a little bit more padding. They're built for the longer run. Yeah. But on the flip side to that, Vans can turn around and say, because we're so we're built so small and compact, it makes it easier to navigate in our sneakers to do what it is you're trying to do. Well, you can even go something as much more simply as the, I think they're more competitively priced than DCs. Okay. Now, actually, that nowadays they might be similar, but and then you have so on the opposite side of strengths or weaknesses, which is like strengths and weaknesses are very self-explanatory. Yeah. These are the things that work for the brand. These are the things that are working against the brand. Yeah. Okay. Then you have opportunities. That these are these are things that like Vans Vans in relation to like DC as its competitor, yeah. they can do to their advantage against DC. Right. But then you have the threats list, which are things that work against Vans in relation to DC. Right, like the comfort, dude. So, so like, so, yeah, so like a comfort versus pr uh, price competitive, you know, and things and like this. And style or whatever, yeah. So, like, that is, so you use competitive analyses to, like, really figure out where you can then fit in as basically the third one wedged between these two major brands. Right. So you look at their strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats, and you make, you basically what you do is you experiment with different, uh, creating differences in your brand, but also looking at what works for them and incorporating that into your brand as well. So this is where you're gonna try to maintain a style, but at the same time try to be competitive yes. with the pricing and not bleed out at the same time. But and and by in in order to do that, you really have to like sort of create familiarity for people that are already using in this case vans or dc so you take those parts of the brand that people can identify with and you bring them into your own brand but then you take things that people don't have in those other brands and you incorporate them into your business to make you different from them right. so you really what you're anytime you're creating a quote-unquote unique brand yeah. you're you're never completely unique you're all you're always emulating something that already exists uh, yeah, unless course. you're literally creating something brand new which is it's much more rare nowadays. It doesn't happen a lot. Yeah, especially with the internet and being able to see everything everywhere all the time. It's kind of hard to have an original thought. It's it's fucking tough, and and like it, to, most things have already been created. Like there's, you know, except for in the the areas of the digital world and technology. Like there's going to be innovations in that all the time. Same thing with medicine. Yeah. Um. But like. But it, normal consumer products. With a base somewhere. Though. Of course it does. Yeah. Of course it does. So one thing I was going to ask you is, you know, when you talk about strengths and weaknesses and shit like that and numbers, is one thing that you bring up in this thing, do you already think about a loyalty, the part of your clientele that's going to stay out of loyalty? Or is that a, a ask me that ask me this question again? I'm sorry, I got an email from somebody. Cut this part out, Kevin. I know I'm doing great fucking things for you right now. But so sorry, future Kev. The loyal loyalty of the customer. When yeah. you're looking at numbers and shit like that, mm -hmm. do you equate those people in, or do you not look at that? Because is there even a such thing as a loyal purchaser? Of, of course something? there is. Of course there is. There's there. So what they. And I like the term. I actually do like the term. They call those they call those customers. Um, well, it depends on what what industry you're in, but like in marketing, they're known as advocates. They're 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 brand advocates specifically. So like they they not only are they purchasers of your product, service, whatever it might be, they're also the people that are going to go to other people and say you should try this brand because it's really good. I like it. You should give it a shot too. I definitely do that. Those are the people that you're not only are you almost always trying to cater to them. You're always trying to create more of them, which is exactly why you have to create effective and helpful content for people. Why you have to maintain a consistent brand voice. Once you start getting advocates, like you want to make sure that you don't, break off from a lot of the way you're communicating with people unless of course you find a better way to do so see i was just gonna say though because wouldn't you wouldn't you see that as like okay you want to maintain your voice but you can't repeat the same thing over and over again no so no no that's not what a brand so a brand voice it's not like 
I'm going to have the same exact messaging across all mediums, no matter what it's your, what you, it's more of an ambient thing. Like you're, what you're trying to do is you're trying to convey a certain set of feelings or emotions every time you speak to your, your user base. Yeah. So like when you, when you're talking about brand voice, brand voice also gets broken down into personality tone. And even it goes to the color palette on the website um, and are we using a ton of punctuation? Are we being very proper with grammar or are we throwing in like some hip terms and not really worrying so much about, oh, is punctuation perfect all the time? You're a brand like Burberry. That shit would matter. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You're that's like the face of like refinement. Like you're, you're yeah. always trying to put across refinement for Burberry. So Burberry, whatever they're fucking called. So like their I brand, the worst fucking brand I could possibly bring their, up their brand voice is one of sophistication I fucking love Burberry dude I love them I, I'll never be able to afford them they're but I love them disgustingly expensive yeah but um yeah so you find you find what works with people and the easiest way to do that is I, and nowadays organically is like social media marketing like being able to actually speak to your audience in real time it's like the best fucking thing in the world so like you get to actually hear your customers, you get to see what kind of voices they have, and then you get to incorporate that voice into your brand. That's the best way you can possibly build the brand voice is by paying attention to your audience and saying, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna work my brand voice like they do. Okay, so for a new company, how can you, is it easy, do you think, is it easy for a company to be able to tell in this age of social media who the trolls are and who the actual customers with a critique are. Because I would imagine it may be a little bit difficult to see the forest through question. the trees. Uh, I mean, like, see, the only, the, the reason I'm saying that's a complicated question is because that really comes down to the data that you're receiving. So like, if you're, if you're seeing a decent amount of sales going through, then you know that most of the people, like I'm sure you're talking about like work. reviewing your product yeah. or like uh, speaking the, speaking about your product to other people. Yeah. That, then or yeah, even if you're, to you directly, like maybe they reach out to you via social media. It, I feel like it's fairly easy after a fashion to spot a troll because like I, I think a lot of that could be broken down to familiarity with your product or service. Right. Like, so like if they, a troll's not really going to take time to like studiously understand your, your product or service they're they're really just going to be there to sort of talk shit after like maybe a sentence or two. So like, I feel like you can break it down like that, but um, yeah, that's all again, that's all off of data. That's all off of analyzing the numbers that are coming in and like, paying attention to what your audience is saying. Like if you, if you see nothing but a slew of trolls on what you're doing, then you, I mean, that should tell you you're doing something wrong. You're, you're drawing in the wrong people. Right. But like I, that, the only, it's a very complicated question uh, in the sense that I, I feel like you do always have to kind of sniff that kind of stuff out. But if the numbers are there, if the sales are there and the interaction is there more often than not, you're having genuine interactions with genuine people. Oh, right. Because I would imagine, I mean, I'm just thinking from the average perspective, of, because this whole thing, while it may seem like a boring topic to bring up, I think this is... I think it's so fascinating, it's ridiculous. I love it. I was going to say, this it. is actually probably the reason why more people don't try to go and open their own business, because, you know, I don't think that things like this are brought up enough. Like, you, people... Mm -hmm. I understand that there's thousands of people out there talking about marketing and shit like that, but I mean the bottom question, because it seems like for me anyway, as an outsider looking in, a business just happens to appear one day and then you're a fucking empire. There's yeah. no real in between. No, it's always it's always a building process. I mean, there are, I'm sure there are some diamonds in the rough. Matter of fact, I know there are that like, They'll show up on the scene and there will just be, there will be a hole in the market somewhere that they fill so perfectly that they immediately explode. It's like like that, you wouldn't even know it wasn't there to begin with. Yeah. Like it, it just makes sense that they're there. Hmm. Um, but no, and marketing is only one facet, by the way, I do need to make this an explicit note. Like it's marketing is only one facet of business development. I'm not even going into like a lot of the super complicated shit. Like I, I just started my own home business, I think it was like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, and I'm gonna have to figure out the 
business financing for that because I've never had to do my own accounting um, for anything business related. So I got to figure that out. I have the marketing thing uh, sort of like figured out at least in a rudimentary way right now just because I've been doing marketing for a little while. But like I, I have a lot more business to develop. I have a fucking uh, business plan that is only one eighth of the way filled out uh, simply because I don't have enough information yet to do a financial uh, forecast, a fucking p l fucking list, which is I'm only going to be able to do profits and losses uh after you start to see what numbers are yeah coming. after i start seeing what's coming in so like i i don't even have a fully fleshed out fucking business yet so and how already... do you how do you this, how do you fucking make a plan when 90 percent of what you're trying to do is guesswork well no the okay so the plan first of all the plan is it's my favorite part really like of of doing any sort of business it seems stuff. psychotic it, it what it is, it, actually, it's it's seriously what you're doing is you're taking something that's potentially extremely complex, which really owning and running a business is one of the most complex things you can possibly do. But a business plan boils that down into the most stupidly simple terms that that exist. Like, you know what? Actually, just to I'll give you an idea. I'll I'll pull up my what I have so far for my business plan. Um, on what I'm currently doing here. Just give me a second and I'll find it for you. Because I just, I sent it to my mother. She was curious about what I had in place so far. So I sent it to her. Which, by the way, the YouTube channel is up too if you want to go check that out. What's that? What do you mean? Your YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, I just... I, I was going to work that in. I was going to work that in. Look, we don't know what direction it's going to go in yet. At the moment, there's a couple reactions on there. Yeah. I wouldn't get your heart set in stone about that being the only thing that you're going to see. Only because, look, it's boring to do one thing all the time. I mean, being married and banging the same woman or man, that's a different kind of commitment. Yes, exactly that. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what the fuck I'm doing with it yet. I, I'm gonna, like, I, I'm do. I did two reaction videos so far. I know reaction videos aren't sustainable simply because you can never really hope to get revenue off of them. What I'm doing right now is audience building. Here's some more marketing for you. Um, the reason I'm pick, I'm doing the content I'm doing right now is because I know that it has a very good chance of quickly building an audience. Uh, reactions build audiences quickly. So then I'm going to look at that and I'm going to say, okay, well, I've done a lot of music. Probably the way that I react to things is interesting to people. So then I'm going to have to like figure out an amalgam of something to create new content to keep that audience interested in me. That's going to be fun. Strategy is always fun. That's anyway. I'm at now. Yeah, I know you are. Yep. It sucks. It's all right, but listen, you already got the podcast going. That's you know what true. I mean? I mean, this is my favorite thing that I do. All right. So here's my simple little, like what I was saying was a business plan is really like a way for you to define to yourself or other, like really it's for investors and stuff. If you're looking for people to invest in your business, the simplest way you can possibly explain why your business exists. So the very first thing I have is my executive summary and I go through opportunity and expectations. Those are my two top things. So the problem in the market that, that I'm trying to solve is my, my company exists to eliminate home technology related troubles. My solution that my company is bringing is through education and hands-on problem solving, it makes consumer technology easy to understand and functional for its users. The market that I'm selling to are primarily middle-aged or elderly consumers who are trying to integrate with the modern technological world but having some trouble doing so. And my competition is Best Buy, Geek Squad, <laughs> other local home-based or small biz on-call IT slash tech repair companies. And then ultimately, why me? Why, why is my business going to fill this gap compared to my competitors? I have been troubleshooting friend and family tech woes for over two decades. I plan to not only resolve consumer tech issues, but also to educate my customers so they can do it themselves the next time around. I also do smaller jobs than other huge tech companies like Best Buy. So I'll show up for setting up an email address, whereas Best Buy Geek Squad won't. So that's what makes my brand unique. Like I'll, I'll, I'll come to your house and solve your small ones, your small tech problems, as opposed to only your large issues that they, that I can charge a ton of money for. Well, not only that, but I would imagine also 
that you've been, like you say there, that you've helped out friends and family for a long time, but you've Perfect. also seen, you've had the advantage of watching this technology grow mm -hmm. into what it is now. I've been a part of it. I mean, that's the best, the best thing about when, I guess, I was born is I was... I was raised into all of this extreme technology. Like I have it better than the younger Gen Yers and things like this because, and even Gen Zers now. And the reason I have it better than them is because it's automatically a part of their life when they come into this world, and they're still like even four or five years old. They're already using tablets. You had to adjust. To I had to. I I have the ability to appreciate that shit for what it is. So like. I have a vested interest in it because it, it's been miraculous for me to witness while I've been living. So like I've been super engaged in it where most kids nowadays being born and then having that shit, they probably get bored of it really quick because it's, they, they've always known it. Yeah. They don't, to them, it's like, all right, this is old now. Yeah. To where us. They're used to technology being exponential, whereas I'm not. Yeah. You know, I'm, what was it? Fucking 20 years ago. I, I still had a shitty SRT TV and fucking auxiliary cables hooking up to my my less than next gen gaming system. So like I I know and by the way I'm not hating on that shit. I'm a total nostalgia head, but like it's a uh, I I've seen where we've come from and where we're going. I can I I have a huge appreciation of that. So like I've always kept it as part of my thing to stay up to date with all tech. Uh, so yeah, I've been able to help with a lot of that stuff. But um, anyway, my closing my closing thing about my marketing stuff is up until I had this interview, I had a lot, uh, like a, just a shit ton of self-doubt. And it didn't matter how much inspirational stuff I read from or, or watched from the Godines and the fucking Vaynerchucks of the world. Like I always felt like I wasn't actually going to ever be a part of the, the these big digital marketing movements because I just thought I couldn't truly understand the formulas that a lot of this stuff worked in. But then I have this conversation with this guy and it turns out, no, we're all failing until we're not failing. like the, And you get to share in that fucking victory and it's so much sweeter after you failed a couple times to have it succeed at some point. Um, I've experienced some successes as well, like, I, I, like some major successes with marketing. But I felt like it was a fluke, and now I don't. That's that's what's been the biggest relief to me, is it wasn't a fluke. What I did was I refined my approach over time. I continuously used the formulas that, that, that have worked for a long time, but I refined my personal approach to those formulas, and then eventually they did succeed, and it's not a fluke. It's just me refining my approach. So that's what it all is. It's, it's marketing, I used to think of it almost solely as an art, it is actually a science. Like it is, it's about experimentation, implementation, and then ultimately proof. You know what I mean? Oh, Ask a Jesus. question, do background research, construct a hypothesis, test with an experiment, procedure working no or yes, analyze data and draw conclusions. So it really is like it's, it's almost exactly the scientific method. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad at all. So, so I mean, the other thing I was going to bring up before was... You said that you've gone down to Jacksonville before, and it is a bit of a hike from Jersey, obviously. Yeah, it's at the it's at the northern tip of Florida, though, so I'll I'll say I had it easy compared to you. Oh my yeah. god, Florida's yeah. so fucking big, phrasing. Yeah, dude, what is it that you put on? I know in the beginning of the trip, maybe you kick it off music, whatever, maybe your favorite shit. Yeah. Halfway through the drive, you gotta be like, bro, if I hear another one of these fucking songs from this band, I'm gonna throw the goddamn, and I'm dating myself, CD out the fucking window. Yeah. You know, oh, so man. what do you do to keep yourself going, especially when you're by yourself yeah. in the fucking car? So when I took my initial trip down to Jacksonville, I did not have Sirius XM yet, which sucked. Uh, so I would have killed for something like The Bonfire or fucking Jim and Sam or oh, yeah. Howard Stern show when I was going down. But um, I really only had music at my disposal. So I would throw on what I would do is I would I would kind of pick like a genre that I liked and I would throw on a playlist. Um, but then as I got closer to Florida, obviously the temperature Getting changed. The vibes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I'm starting to see palm trees in South Carolina. Yeah. So 
it switched over to 311 pretty quickly. Yeah, but this, dude, when you're on your way out and you're leaving Florida, the last thing I want to do is hear some joke oh, yeah, off no. with, you know what I mean? Like, stop. Yeah, no. Yeah. You had your time, bitch. Yeah. Take your fucking bumba clot weed and go over there. I don't want to know nothing about anything that yeah. you're fucking singing about, dude. Yeah, no. Ke- so, on the way down, catching the vibes, I was listening to, like, reggae, 311, stuff like when that. When you're on the way up, you want to fucking... Ugh. I don't. I, I want to just listen to the sound of silence on repeat. I was just about to say you're gonna put on some fucking Tori Amos and feel bad for yourself. Yeah, I don't remember what I listened to on the way. I know. I okay. So on the way up, probably Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina. I was still rocking three eleven. But by the time I got to North Carolina, I was like, okay, that's that's useless. And I think I actually switched over to weirdly. I think I think it was the Fallout. What which one was out then? It wasn't Fallout 4. It was Fallout New Vegas. I'm pretty sure I switched over to the Fallout New Vegas soundtrack. As a game, right? And then Fallout 3. Yeah, yeah. Which, it was all, like, classic, like, old 40s and 50s music. Like, I just... Ah. Oh, yeah. No, just to keep it interesting, oh, man. gross. Oh, stop. I love uh, that hey, shit. Hey, man, look. I, I support you. I, I support it, your fucking... I support your decision-making, but... You know, I'm not taking my racist grandmother to the ball anytime soon. You know what I mean, dude, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know, man. It was uh, like I don't want to when I'm when I'm driving. You don't even have a license, asshole. Uh, yeah, my life is a, a spitting image of success at 33. I, I don't want to feel like I'm I'm about to walk into a speakeasy. When yeah. I turn my fucking stereo up, I do. But I think that shit's cool because like, I'm an asshole. It's like though. listening to history. You gotta, you have to, you. It, I challenge you to think differently about things. I think plenty different. Well, I'm saying like when, <laughs> yeah, I do. I totally. Well, yeah, I'm a psycho. I mean, by accident. Though. Yeah, I'm not talking 100%. about by accident. I'm talking about by choice. But it's like musically, <laughs> musically though, dude. Like I don't even like. We're right. a traditionalist, and a lot of people are, man. Like yeah. That's, but my go-to wouldn't even be. Wouldn't even be rap. Honestly, I mean, listening to some certain ambient music and shit like that, I think that would be good, and it uh, sounds crazy, and if you're driving, maybe that's not what you want to do. Yeah, I but think if I'd you're, get tunnel vision. I don't know. If you're in the passenger seat, if you're switching with a driver, yeah. maybe if you're on your way back and you're looking to relax a little bit and calm your mind down and not worry so much about everything that's going on in front of you, maybe you put some shit on like that. I don't know if I had to construct the perfect playlist right now, what it would be. I'll be honest with you, 100%. I think for a drive... Okay, so the difference between the drive to and the drive away for me specifically is... Does it depend on the trip? The drive to, you're anticipating. The drive from, you're you're basically just... It's just what you have to do. So, like, there's no... The difference is... The drive to is a journey. The drive back is a necessity. So I don't think there's anything, really, I don't think there's anything entertaining enough to really liven up the drive home, you know, because you're just, you're going back to your normal life at that point. Now, would po- our podcast off of the table because it's people talking? Do you think yes. that's a little too... Ta- no, talk radio is totally fucking different. I think that talk radio is the single best way to right. get through long fucking trips. Okay. Because you, you're you basically, even if you're sitting silently by your... It's got like you've got a gr- group of friends. A group of car. friends that you can talk... Like you're not talking to them, but you're hearing an interesting conversation. Yeah. I would have fucking killed for that on the drive to and from Jacksonville. That's what I meant for the ride back. I know definitely going down there, like, yeah. okay, I could do that. But on the way back, I mean, I guess... It, I would imagine the experience that you have during the trip would probably also kind of dictate what you listen to on the way back. Right? Oh, yeah, like the afterglow, you mean? Yeah, 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 like I, yeah, definitely. Like that's what I was saying. Like I, I remember clearly on the way home, like all the way up to the southern tip of North Carolina, I was listening to three eleven. But once everything started turning, sort of like just normal again like there was no there were no palm trees anymore i was like okay i need to switch and i switched over to uh fallout and then i think i went to metal because metal metal to me is like just it's such a dynamic genre like you'll get some classical in there you'll get some fucking weird stuff going on so it keeps it interesting and keeps me awake now do you do you feel trying to think of the word that i'm looking for 
are you happy when you're on your way back up and you start seeing the familiar signs of home? Or are you like, no, oh, I want to go back because no. Me. Yeah. For me, I mean, you already know this. Yeah. You already know. You I hate it, fucking dude. hate it here. Yeah. I, I have never been. And I am so sorry to all those like, uh, those diehard Jerseyites that, that might listen to this. I, I'm, dude, we're not in danger. I looked at the dude, statistics. I am so fucking in hate with this state. I've I've never liked living in New Jersey. I've been saying since I was a little kid. I remember I used to watch fucking um, Three Ninjas and shit with my brother, oh my or like God. any of those Rocky classic like eighties nineties. Oh my God, I Rocky can't. loves Emily. I know Holy my shit, shit, bro. But I used to watch these guys, and they I think they lived out in like fucking Vallejo, California, and like all these different places uh, in California on the West Coast, fucking New York, whatever it might be. And I'd be like, I want to live there. Why the fuck do I live in this nothing of a goddamn state? I, I have to see, when I go up to my grandmother's house, I have to see fucking just pipes piping out fucking white smoke. And it's just this industrial shithole. Now, I will say that my perspective changed a little bit after I watched The Sopranos. Like, I I at least had some sort of, like... Pride a little bit. Yeah, a little pride in my state. Like, not yeah. because of the mafia, but I'm saying, like... A little bit. Being able me. to see, like, just how... Because it really... I will say this. New Jersey is a much more diverse place than I used to give it credit for. Definitely. Uh, there's a lot of different demographics here, but, like... Still, though, after all this fucking time of being here, I'm uh, severely, sincerely fucking over... New Jersey, but then when I look at a place, this is where this is where people are always going to get fucked up, no matter what. Anybody that's listening out there in the podcast first, when I tell you how fucking badly I want to live in Florida, I, I already the the hate is universal for Florida. Everybody fucking hates it. I mean, all you really have to look at is two things: one, it's a red state primarily, so almost all conservative. Number two, drug addicts and violent crime. Like, I mean, it's fucking everywhere down there. I don't care. I'd rather live um in that state. I'd rather look at palm trees every fucking day. I'd rather be sweating my fucking soul out of my eyeballs when it's really fucking humid. I want to be in Florida. That's where I want to be. Well, my brother was saying he talked to somebody that lives that moved from Jersey to Vegas. Fuck Vegas. I would never live there. And they said they would rather take a 102 degree day in Vegas than a 90 degree humidity day in Jersey. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because, okay, and I'm going to, I don't know if people are going to understand when I say this. I have said this tons of times to people, though. Depending on what you're seeing in your environment, you can tolerate shit a lot better. That's so, true. like, when I'm sweating my balls off, but I'm seeing palm trees and fucking oceans <laughs> and Spanish restaurants near me, like, I'm like, okay, I'm I'm in the tropics. It sort of fucking makes sense. Or at least I'm in, like, a, a, a place where there's, a, a strong Latino population, which is, they're from hot countries and everything, right? Yeah. When you're in fucking New Jersey <coughs> and you're staring at a city Some block jobs. with garbage all over the fucking street and it's the <laughs> same temperature, it's like, I don't even have a fucking nice palm tree to look at while this nope. is happening. If you're lucky, you have a half-dead pine tree staring you in the face just looking at triggers yeah. of fucking allergies <laughs> that are looking for a safe space. If my yeah, if my if my visual environment matches the like the weather, I'm I'm all about it. I don't fucking care. But I completely agree. Yeah, because okay, out in Vegas, you're looking at the fucking desert. That's cool, man. You're burning you're burning away in the hot sands of of Nevada. Neato, because it makes sense aesthetically. Yeah. When you're fucking sitting there and your your balls are sitting in a puddle of sweat when you're waiting for a fucking transit bus. Like, in fucking Newark, it's it's dreadful. It's the worst feeling on the planet. I guarantee, speckled throughout every week of the rest of my life, I'll be like, oh, but, you know, Jersey had this. Yeah. You know? So, dude, fucking, oh, God damn it, I had it, and then I fucking lost it. Son of a bitch. That's probably my fault. I interrupted. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it had some, it was connected somewhere with... The fuck, uh, that's what it was. You were talking about you can't take the cold anymore? Yeah, no, I hate it Dude, now. within six hours of being back into this state, my body, the pain level difference from being down there to here 
is ridiculous. True. You can feel the fucking difference, bros. That's the one thing that I envy not being able to live down there. Because the second your muscles spasm, that's when it all goes really bad for yeah, you. Yeah, and I, bro, I, it was 2 o'clock in the morning. I was in a fucking hot tub. I come back here, oh, dude, man. and every... I feel like I just got off methadone. Like, every <laughs> fucking cell in my body is like, what the <laughs> fuck did you do? Fucking weather withdrawal. Yeah, yeah, fucking bullshit. But God damn it, man, I can ramble. Yeah, oh shit. We, I don't even know how long we are. This is a four-parter. You guys won't know that because we're going to put it together. Post, yeah. But like, New Jersey blows. Yeah. Um, thank you guys once again for listening to Laughing at Birds. We love you. We love birds more. And yeah, wait, wait. Before you leave, don't go anywhere. Listen, Douglas being on YouTube, I don't know what the fucking channel is going to be yet. Do me the favor, bro, and go subscribe to that shit. If you're listening to this on SoundCloud, there's the sidebar where you see the links for all the PayPal, the fucking Twitter, the Instagram, the Radio Public, all that shit. My YouTube and his YouTube are both in the side corners. You can Are they really? That. You added mine? Yeah, I added Oh yours. shit, I didn't know that. Thank so you, So you dude. can click it, click on that, go check it out. Even if you don't watch the fucking video, leave a like, subscribe to Thank the you, channel. Man. Thank you so Just much. Just because, look, bro, we're stronger in fucking numbers. Neither of us know where any of this shit is going to end up, but if we all don't support each other, dude, what is the sense of doing anything that we're fucking doing? Totally agreed. And if it, by the way, let's throw it to the audience too. If you guys have any projects and stuff that you want to make us know that you want to make known to us, let us know. We'll check your shit out too, dude. We'll build each other up in this community. You Definitely. know what I mean? Definitely. I mean, that's how we've been rolling, man. I had I actually should give them a shout out real quick. Can we start Apple calling Hammer. Can we start calling them our fucking uh, bird watchers? Bird watchers. I like that. Yeah, the the Laughing at Birds podcast fans are bird watchers. Bird Hence watchers. I gotta write that down. Fucking a, man. Yeah. Fucking Apple Hammer. Whatever the fuck they're called. Oh yeah, a Fenimer, man. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, so we we both got to enjoy this this. Uh, they're a melodic death metal band out of Toulouse, France, named Afanimer. I think that's what they're called. Excellent, excellent fucking band. Matter of fact, we should link them somewhere. I don't know where the hell we can link them. Well, link them in can YouTube, you do, and I think we can link can them. Can you do posts on SoundCloud, like written posts, or no? In the description. Oh, okay, okay. I think you can add it. Uh, okay. Um... Check them out. They're fucking awesome. Shout out to that band. The guy, I don't have his name directly in front of me. Uh, I know it was Mark something or other. I'm terrible at pronouncing names, so I'm not even going to try. But I remember one of the members of the band reached out to me through YouTube via email and asked me to check it out. They have a new album that's coming out on the 22nd. Go check that shit out if you are into melodic metal. This may be an, a band for you if you've never heard of it before. Go give them a listen, dude. I'll throw out I'll throw out some fucking names. So like, <clears throat> if you like bands like Enciferum, uh, Winter Sun, Corpaclani, Little Immortal, uh, a little bit of Immortal, Moore's Principium Est. Like if you like shit like that, you're really gonna fucking dig a Phantomer, man. Like they are solid, solid metal. So yeah, dude, appreciate those guys for reaching out. And if you want to reach me, there's a link to my email on the YouTube that is for business-like transactions. If you want to get your shit up on the channel, if you would like to be a guest on the podcast, whatever it is that you want to do, bro, we're not hard to reach. Fuck no. So with that, like you said... Bird watchers, as you're known now. To our bird watchers, thank you again so much for tuning into episode 10 of Laughing at Birds, and we will see you guys next week. Damn. That's fucking good, dude. Yeah.